form this morning. Neil Folds and Stephen Hendry. Um, if you can't get up for a match like this, Stephen, mm. you can't get up for anything. It's going to be a cracking match, isn't it? Yeah, it's an absolute monster match this afternoon. Um, I think when these two play, it's, I mean, today could be one of the matches of the season. Um, obviously, got the World Championship to, to come, the, the, the biggest event. But but this this the match today, I, I'm fascinated to see how Ronnie Sullivan comes out after losing to Judd Trump in the final of the Masters. We've got lots to talk about ahead of this one. Let's just quickly though, reflect on last night as well, uh, Neil, because Mark Allen, the top seed, was playing on table two, but he went through. He was six two up, and he saw Karen Wilson come back at him, but he held his nerve, didn't he? And he closed it out well. Mm. I don't think any of us was surprised that Karen Wilson made that comeback because he's a really tenacious player, you know. Um, I don't think he's at his best, but he got to the point where it looked like going to a decider, you know, and Mark Allen did a tremendous clearance to avoid that. The last thing he wanted was to go eight all. He'd seen two other comebacks happen and... Uh, you know, not only, not only is he the, the top seed, the four remaining players are the four highest uh, you know, ranked players and they've won over one and a half million pounds on the year. So we've got everything here. Yeah, what did you make of Mark Allen last night? I think he's had his best form earlier on in the season, but mm. perhaps he could find that form again here that would take him into the crucible, obviously. Yeah, well, obviously it was on table two, so we didn't see it all of the match. But it, well, what I've seen, he looked sharper than he was at Preston. Uh, or the last couple of events, he looked a little bit flat to me there. Um, he looked sharper. But his clearance in the final frame was magnificent. Uh, I mean, if that doesn't give him huge confidence uh, coming through to the semi-final, nothing will. It, it was brilliant. A more straightforward victory then for Ronnie last night against Stuart Bingham. Um, we saw a bit of everything in there, including a very sticky tenth frame. A real safety arm wrestle with something like 60 safety shots played in, uh, in one period. Mm. They all got stuck down <laughs> in that bottom corner and the reds clustered round the blue ball. It was something to behold. Well, I, I didn't really want to ever see this frame again, to be honest, but this is a lot better. This is a lot better way of, of, of watching it. Yeah, it was um, It was just a, the, the, obviously the blue going over the pocket. It was just it was a horrible frame. A horrible frame. I couldn't even think, think of anything to say. 20 <laughs> minutes without a pot. Uh, you know, yeah. it lasted a very long time, and it's the kind of frame sticker that can disrupt a, a player's um, focus. And certainly, I think the one thing you could say, Neil, is Ronnie showed a lot of patience. Yeah, he's a long way in front in the match, and I think, um, you know, he seems to be up for anything at the moment. You know, like whatever the, the game throws at him, because he's been playing a really good all-round game. You know, not only in that match, but of course when he won uh, in Preston. You know, in that final, his safety was immaculate. His break building, he's almost trying to play the perfect snooker at the moment. He's doing a I mean, good job of that. Well, those two results last night meant that the semi-final draw looks like this. And as Neil said, the top four players here, look at that. Mark Allen taking on Neil Robertson in Friday's semi-final. And today we'll be looking forward to seeing Judd Trump take on Ronnie O'Sullivan. And it's, as well as all the other things that this match throws up, it does also throw up the fact that these are the two top players currently in the Coral Cup standing, Stephen. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. It's the same four players that was in the semi-finals at Preston. Uh, different, different formations, but the same four player so it shows that, that these are the four to beat at the moment um, but yeah I mean that today's match you, the, the, you've got the top two there I mean I, I, I can't wait for it to get started really. Okay let's hear from the two semi-finalists now they have been talking to Phil Yates. Judd at Preston you beat Jack Lazowski from three down with four to play now you've done Mark Williams three down with four to play winning 9-8 is the relishing of the fight the last piece of the jigsaw? Um I think so. I think obviously there was uh, very tough to take to be 8-5 down. He made a good clearance and kind of really felt out of the game at that point and just managed to sort of dig in and really sort of clear my head when I sat down and really try and go again and believe that I can win four frames in a row. Obviously, I'd done it against Jack Lazowski, but obviously to do it against Mark Williams, obviously uh, one of the greats of the game, is very pleasing for myself. I felt all right at the start and then just that scrappy frame, you know, and then Stuart's asking me for a re -rack when there's like four reds on the table and the blues over there, and I'm thinking, when someone says that, you know, they're looking for it, so I kind of thought we could be here all night with this frame, and it just basically just took the sting out of the game, you know, and in the end, I couldn't even make 20, nor could he, and it would have, um, it's, I think it's good for both of us that it was over quick, because we could have been out there all night just making 15s and 20s, which would have been quite embarrassing. I mean, I see Hendry in the commentary box, he was nearly falling asleep, so my hero, I've kind of ruined his night. Looking at the positives, though, the first session you played some lovely stuff. Yeah, I played all right, you know, and uh, a few old ranking points available in this one, so I've got, uh, I don't know how many ranking points that's I've got for, the, for getting to the semis, but uh, it's all good, mate. A lot of players are intimidated by Ronnie O'Sullivan, let's face it, but you seem to savour the challenge. Yeah, it's always, it's always fun, I think, playing him. I think, obviously, 
Um, but he sort of brings a, a, a different audience to snooker, and I, I see that as a, a challenge to try and um, pick a few fans from him and, and try and take them. So I think recently I've played well against him. Every time I, I play him, I'm under no illusion that I could get smashed any time. And now Judd Trump again. You've played him a lot this season, and he's a tiger, you know, knocking in balls like you do. Yeah, no. Listen, he's a he's a great player. You know, he's won you know lots of tournaments. You know, he's coming into his thirties now, so you know he'll want to start sort of putting some silverware on the board. And you know, he's had a good season so far. You know, and uh, should be a good match. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Just interesting to hear um, Ronnie's comment there about Judd Trump saying it's time he puts put some more silverware yeah. on the shelf a little bit of a needle that one um, I, th- I, th- I, th- I think he meant it's coming into his time and he, and he needs to obviously transfer his, his form and his talent into more titles which to be fair he is doing this season I mean he's won the Masters he's, he's, um, he's, won, he's won, was he, won three events so to be fair he is doing that yeah, I mean, look, you, the, as you said earlier on, they've they won the first two of these events. Um, the, two of the three Triple Crown events have been won by Ronnie O'Sullivan and Judd Trump this season. You know, the UK and the Masters. You know, everything points to this match being a blockbuster. And uh, these are the two guys who are doing all the winning. You know, I know that Mark Allen and Neil Robertson need to be mentioned as well because, you know, they're out on their own as well. So it's a tremendous tournament, this. Mm. They've met a lot of finals. They've met in a lot of finals. And, and in recent times, Judd Trump has mm. had the better of Ronnie, hasn't he? Yep, very, very much so. And as I said, there's, there's two, maybe three players in the game that fancy the job against O'Sullivan in, in a long match. Trump is one of them. Um, as I say, he took him apart in the final of the Masters. And to be fair, the, the two or three terms that, that Ronnie played after that, he was kind of flat. I don't know how that affected him. But as I say, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, if, Ronnie's not the sort of person I don't think that thinks about revenge in a way. I, I want to beat him because of that. I, but I think I'd be hurt. Yeah, he, this was Judd Trump actually down here earlier because we've gone down to the one-table format, so I think he just wanted to come down and get a sense of what it was like. Yeah, to be fair, he's done this, and since they brought the rule in that you can practice on the match table, I think it started at the Masters, and he did it every single match, and, and, he's, and he's carried it on every tournament he plays in. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and... Uh He's got a good format now. He's, he's changed everything about his regime. You know, he's, I think one or two things in his lifestyle have changed, basically. And uh, his brother's coming to matches with him now. And it's, a, it's how it should be, you know. You're out there to do a job. A little bit of superstition, maybe, about this bit of practice on the table. But no, no conversation keep... there, is there? No, I, think, I don't think there has to be any chat between them. You know, they, they don't say a lot. I've seen Jack give him one or two stern words, you know, between sessions in Northern Ireland, actually. Really? And, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and Judd just was interested and it worked because he won won the match in in question so they've got a good little regime going and that's what you need you know you don't need too many people around you surround yourself with with all different people you know that's his brother and he knows the game it's all quiet then the place is absolutely buzzing now everybody is looking forward to this one up in the practice room there's uh, Ronnie uh, and Judd just keeping his arm in every time Ronnie comes to a tournament now there's something at stake you know he is a he is setting new records, history maker. We saw that thousandth century in Preston. He's won away from drawing level with your ranking title uh, event wins, which is, you know, it, it, he's at that period in his life now where he can he can tick these off. It, it, he's still the man to beat. Uh, I mean, OK, I mean, Jud, Judd's won, won plenty this season. Neil Roberts won, has won tournaments. But as long as Ronald Sullivan's in a, in a tournament, he is the man to beat, um, even, even taking Mark Selby out of the equation. So he, he's, he's the main man of snooker, isn't he, he still? Yeah. And he can say all he wants about ranking points but also at stake if he wins this title he will be the number one yeah. player in the world he'll take that off Mark Selby yeah and everyone said Selby was un- you know he, he couldn't reach Selby in the rankings but he's done it without playing it very much he doesn't play in anything overseas doesn't play in tournaments involving qualifiers if he gets to number one that is a remarkable achievement in a word each who's going to win oh I can't pick a winner I seriously can't pick a winner today fence sitting <laughs> I think I think Trump uh, might have the edge at the moment There we go then, we'll find out very soon. Don't go away, coming up on the other side of the break, we'll kick off the action from this first semi-final live from Flandigno. Judd Trump facing Ronnie O'Sullivan. Phil Seymour. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the Coral Tour Championship here at Venue Cymru in Flandigno. This is semi-final number one, it's the best of 19 frames, and it's time now to welcome the players. We begin with a 10-time ranking event winner. He is the reigning Masters Champion, the ace in the pack, Judd Trump! Play. 
playing in his 74th ranking event semi-final. He's won more Triple Crown titles than any player in the history of the sport. He's a five-time champion of the world, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> What a reception. The King against the Challenger. This season, between them, they've won over £1.3 million. Pounds. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, the first frame. Good chance to play. And I think today we can expect to see snooker like a million dollars. Eight frames this afternoon. It's a race to ten. Yeah, just looking at the handshake, there was no little smile or acknowledgement. This is going to be business from the off this afternoon. I'm not saying the vibe is identical, Alan, but this reminds me of around the 1990 mark when Steve Davis was the man and you knew Stephen Hendry was there to eventually replace him. Yeah, it does have that feel about it, doesn't it, Phil? All great players you know, through time to decline, but only in his 40s there's been no sign of that. First chance then. Lovely control. Well. And he's not playing this left-handed. I say all business. Five. Twelve. See how he 13. thinks about going into the pack, then a couple of reds in the open. He really has become the master of the sweet science of brake building, as O'Sullivan, the last couple of years. It definitely has changed. 20. He needs time before going into the pack. He's going to be going in this time, then. Well, on a couple of occasions late on against Stuart Bingham last night, he went into the pack really well and was unlucky. That wasn't the most lusty split. Hmm, red overcut. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 28. That's the sighting tendency when the cue ball and red are close together and you're cutting back into a blind pocket. The way it was played, though, the only red he could leave was the one he went for. That was clever. <laughs> Safety shot, actually. Judd these days knows the importance 
of a good cue ball in a shot like that. It's not about getting the red back down this side of the blue. It's about his cue ball positioning in bulk. And that was very nice. Very familiar territory, this is for O'Sullivan. It is 74th ranking event semi-final. Only Stephen Hendry with 82 has been in more. Mind you, Alan, Judd Trump is no stranger to these big matches, they're becoming second nature. Yeah, it's just another day at the office, isn't it? He's been familiar to this type of situation, Judd, especially the last couple of years. Good as well by Judd. There's way not much shot to play. Trying to set the trap. Nearly got Ronnie. Such an importance in this match to get a good cue ball with this type of shot. Oh, this is beautiful. What a shot this is. Oh, <laughs> what a shot. And look at the reds. Angles called that before it hit the, the side cushion. He knew exactly what it was going to finish up. <coughs> yeah, what do you do here? Nothing really to land on. The red by the black, he doesn't want to shift. I don't think the black goes right now. But that appears to be the only red he could possibly land on and, and get safe-ish. Don't want a free ball. Don't want going behind the brown. Oh, he's OK. We'll go back. It's a good shot that Judd's played there, actually. He's given himself a little sight at it. He's got two possible reds that he can thin off. The thing the second time around, don't adjust too much. Almost play at the exact same shot, but with a different pace or a touch more side. No contact, but that's oh, okay yes. as well. Another well, sight up. I think this time you'll see him just inject a bit more pace. He hung off the second time round. Just watch the pace now of this shot. See, I think it'll inject a bit more. What that will do, it'll get the cue ball a little further left off the second cushion. Oh, Completely different shot third four. time round, above the middle pocket. <coughs> it's 
So three misses already. 12 penalty points given away, but that's still an acceptable trade-off for Trump if he can make this thin contact. The one thing he doesn't want to do is hit the reds thick and leave the frame on, because, mark my words, that's what he could easily do. I think on the balance of where he was, Alan, I think he'd settle for that. Yeah, absolutely. Something else. Be sitting there thinking, I don't mind Ronnie having a pop at this long red now. Ronnie would have been expecting something easier than this. This is pressure. There you go. Good match snooker that was by Judd Trump. is also a good match snooker if he plays the blue the pink is just not a shot you want to be playing this early just yet have to find another red and get nicer on that pink well he is playing it yeah you see he just potted it on the thick side didn't quite not quite into your running into your flow into your action just yet see that Get the cue ball making the journey. So, thankfully, this red will go. He's in business here, Judd Trump. Eight. Fifteen. From there, it looks tight. I'm not surprised here, Alan. Not surprised at all. 15. Yeah, the other thing that is surprising is that if there was any doubt about the black at all, he could have played for pink quite easily, couldn't he? Off that last red. Oh, this pink is not easy at all. I'm quite happy to leave it. This will take some piece of cueing. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. That shot is a pressure ball at any stage of a match. Early on, it's a real test. Seven. 
he thinking of bringing this red into play? Playing this shot, wonder. Force and stun. He is. No. Yep. Deciding to pick off the loose ones. That was an option, but I'll wait for later. Twelve. This is where he's usually excellent, Judd. Getting top side of this blue. Thirteen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Now that red's going to interest him, will it? 24. I think he, surely he's got to play just to nudge it. Oh, that's a gorgeous shot. 25. A little unfortunate. Mm, I think the red's just on. It is Alan, but he's just travelled that extra inch or so into the awkward zone. Very little to aim for. Thirty. It's a shot that he'd probably get more than you know, he's not playing it to middle. Hedging his bets a little. Yeah. That's a brilliant shot and a great choice of shot. Minimal risk attached to it. <clears throat> right, for bolt colour then. Providing he pots this. Only would need pink. This has been fabulous. Thirty four. Thirty five. So the blue will put Trump fourteen ahead. That means he needs yellow, green, and brown. Forty-two. Forty-five. This clearance will embolden. Trump more than a, a sizable century. Uh, Sullivan missed a couple of pressure balls in this opening frame. A red from mid range, a tricky pink to middle. Uh, the second mistake has been 54. punished. To the fourth. A 54 clearance to the blue. 
and it's Judd Trump who draws first blood in this Coral Tour Championship semi-final. And O'Sullivan breaks off in frame two, playing catch-up. I think Trump will be delighted with the way things have begun. Dangerous game, leaving Judd Trump this type of shot. There you go. Another cracker. I thought at one point that he might snooker himself behind the blue, which would have been poor justice. Goes to left, uh, sorry, right corner. So you're looking for high on it. I don't want to be too straight. Wants to bring other reds into play. And the tip screw off this. A shot that he excels at. A shot Neil Robertson also brilliant at playing. There you go. Eleven. You made this observation, Alan, and I think you're absolutely right. When he comes to playing for the blue and getting on the right side of the blue, he's deadly. Not just with one particular kind of shot, with all of them. Yeah, and there is an act that is, is also mentally... 16. You have to, you know, force yourself to get high each and every time. You can't slacken off mentally for a second. There you go again. 17. Nice and punchy. People generally would be a little more travelling than Ronnie when he's in scoring, but we've got the Q power added to the control that Judd has these days. <coughs> Makes it so much easier. He's interested in something down this black, around the black spot here, I think. Oh, this is going to take power. He's on the black, I think, is he? Yeah, not quite.
Head to head wise, he stands up against O'Sullivan. From 23. Total frames played. O'Sullivan's 123. <laughs> Trump with the first frame here is 116. And I think the most vital breakdown of their head to heads is that Trump's beaten O'Sullivan in five of their eight finals. For all of the O'Sullivan fans out there who want some good news, well, they've played in four semi-finals, these two, and O'Sullivan has won them all. than he would miss Brown's waiting mm, mm, close the only impression you can gain from the way things have gone so far is that understandably O'Sullivan is feeling it early on I think he just has that realisation that you can't leave Judd in close. You know, I said back at uh, in Preston at the Players' Championship, I think Judd, when he's in close, is probably the most deadly player in the game right now. When the balls are open, you just think it's frame over. You see, this game's not just about what you do. It's what you make your opponent think and believe. You get the benefit of your own work and you also get the benefit of the pressure that you put on the guy in the other chair. see the pink fancy important I think he can play it with almost dead weight pace if this was on the club table where they pull in it would be a lot easier than this Oof. just seven Thirteen. Fourteen.
20. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Talking about breakdown. Never backs off, there's Ronnie. Getting the black on the spot. First. First chance he's got. This makes this a little easier. 36. Played that lovely top side of pink too. Nineteen the lead. Sixteen's thirty-five. Forty-two. Need one of those two reds by the left middle pocket 43. then. The shake of the head 50. suggests he's too straight on this red, and that indeed is the case. But the use of big screw in your first side rectifies the situation. He did have a degree of angle in fairness there. 58. Well, frame ball 58. coming up, but this penultimate red isn't a cinch. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 64. Not quite enough to make Jack Trump not in concession. The frame continues. Two snookers needed, and quite rightly, he's coming back, Alan. Yeah. And he's got one of them. Part of the table from Ronnie. That was a little shot, that. Especially with green and brown are there, sitting nice for potential snookers. Yeah, whichever shot Ronnie chooses here, the one thing he won't be doing is leaving a free ball should he miss the red. Important that he hits this. No, sir. Foul. Shot trump four. Maybe he's trying to sneak in behind yellow. It's a good kiss on the blue. Uh, that's not it, but blue and pink are now will interest both players. See, the other thing here is Ronnie can't afford to leave Judd a pot at the red. See? He's playing a safety shot, trying to keep the red tight. Good effort. Leaves Judd red, black or red, pink. Takes that, peels off the yellow in behind green and probably gets a good snooker in behind brown. Mm. 
That's that. Whoa. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one, and the frame. This time, Trump does concede, primarily with a 64 break. O'Sullivan is back on level terms. Thank you, frame three. Your trumps are break. You know, this new Coral series introduced onto the snooker calendar this year has been an unqualified success already. We're guaranteed for this to build into quite a crescendo. Cheltenham, Preston, and now Glendidno. Three wonderful tournaments. By the end of tonight, we'll be halfway through this event, and unusually at halfway, we'll know one of the finalists. So that's two points out of two with the rest for Judd Trump. Neither easy. I think he's underrated when it comes to his rest play. Eight. Yeah, just for once he comes short in the blue, so it's not a little problem here. Just recycle the cue ball. A little bit of side off a couple of cushions. Thirteen. Just as the red was going in, we got a glimpse of where the pink was, and there you can see borderline. Trump's taking looks from both sides. Can he see enough of it? Yeah, providing this loose red at the back of the, the bunch goes, which I think it does, he can flick it in with just a hint of left hand side. He might not have to. Probably just play it with just a trace of left. Twenty. Thank you. 
Jotrop 20. <clears throat> he pots so well and so dependably at short range when he misses one, even one that was an examination, he's surprised. But you catch that near jaw at any kind of pace and it's the death knell. They will not go in. Breathed a sigh of relief, I think. Verney there, I think they're second that top red. I was worried it would go, but the other reds came and covered it. Same thing again then. Probably looking for in behind Brown. Yellow an option. Better to just over hit this shot than under hit. See, you always want to give that just a little more pace, that give it almost two chances of getting in behind something. Once again then, Brown the target. Actually play this to almost try and cannon the Brown. Miss it on the right, you get in behind it. Miss it on the left, you've got yellow as cover. That's gone figure of eight this time. Can't get in behind Brown, but yellow's the target. Spotting the red would have been purely speculative. The main thing for O'Sullivan there, the overriding priority, was to get the cue ball back into bulk. But... That was the big bet. He left the red. Oh. Joe Trump, one. Yeah, nice cover. Judd would have been aware. These two reds behind the black spot will be Ronnie's. Ronnie's thinking. Three cushions. Cushions have been playing nice this week. I expect them to get close to this. Any rogue bounces, really. Yeah, this looks good. Very good.
Yes, I'm glad you said about conditions, Alan. I think it's worth saying that uh, the table fitters have done a really good job at this event. Tomas, the, the man in charge from Poland, must be applauded. Parts like that are difference makers, Alan. Doesn't matter who you're playing. Yeah, what an asset that is to have. What I liked about the way when he was shaping up for it, you could almost sense that he fancied putting it. No, I think he thought he was going to get it. Sometimes you play those shots more in hope than expectation, right. but you just didn't get that feeling. Four. No. The black's a Ten. little hemmed in. But Trump doesn't need to be impatient. Doesn't need to beat the traffic just yet. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Putting a, a scorching. Twenty-nine. Red from distance and then being reliable in amongst the balls. It's a tried and tested 30. formula. that will win you much gold. Thirty-six. Yeah, obviously red-pink. 
you'll see the frame safe-ish but he wants to get nice and straight in this yes, pink he wants to see another red disappear well he might not be able to do that now see, he wanted another red to stop Ronnie coming back to the table brown being off its spot helps here spin this round in between yellow brown Forty-three. Judge Trump, forty-three. So just a degree of hope, as Alan said for O'Sullivan. <laughs> Lovely forty-three break from Trump. He's sixty-four in front. A couple of snookers required. Sixteen. What a shot that was. I know he needs a couple of snookers, but at least he's still in with a fighting chance. Just has to judge the little cannon on the red here. Just wants to nestle the red down onto the... Just almost on the, the black cushion. Uh, this is clever as well. Taking the pink makes no difference to the scores. Yeah. So, fancy him getting in behind black. It's whether he can get the cute, the, the red near a bulk colour. Oh, is he in behind yellow here? Is he in behind yellow? Oh, that is fabulous. Because Judd really does need to hit this red this time potential free ball and if not that the nestle in behind yellow next time round by Ronnie what he will play here I do believe is, is almost try to hit the red and the yellow at the same time he wouldn't mind fouling as long as he shifts the yellow Momentary relief, but not out of the woods yet. <laughs> Same thing applies. looking ahead here, the one thing he certainly doesn't not want to do if he goes left cushion is miss the red low and go in off that would probably cost him the frame with a free ball do not miss this low yeah, he won't mind that actually Far, Ronnie O'Sullivan, five <laughs> may look a little clumsy but it was quite clever
if O'Sullivan can extract the necessary penalty points. The openness of the balls very much in his favour. But catching the bump of the middle pocket most certainly wasn't. All doubt now effectively removed. Trump now and the frame. Trump won the first frame and now he's back in front. He leads 2 1. Although it is still very early days in this best of 19 frame affair, I think it could be an important one. The mood of the two players going into the interval will definitely be influenced by what happens in the next 10 or 15 minutes. this red again which had knocked in earlier cue ball was a lot closer to the bolt cushion so hand on the bed again fancy him for this just a case of whether he feels he it's the time to attack the black right now I think he might play this to just flick the top side of the, the red he's played it oh Eighty percent long pot success for Trump. That will get the job done. <coughs> Eight. Trump eight. Yeah, that was a toughie, wasn't it? Look at this. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. It looks so simple to nestle in behind a ball colour, but to have that degree of accuracy and delicacy is an art in itself. Yeah, and it's given Judd plenty to think about. Four cushions and in the back of the bunch of reds.
for a quarter of a century, ever since he turned professional. O'Sullivan's been money in the bank with that shot. Seven. This is where he's superb, getting low in this loose red. Bring all the reds into play. Looks nice for a deep screw shot. Forty. I played the punch. I think playing the punch, I'm never quite sure of the cue ball. More control. And the screw type shot. Now this is a big shot now. Where the reds are. The good thing about it, it doesn't have to be too ambitious or is he playing it with pace? Oh, what a shot. What a shot that is. <laughs> He missed a pressure ball in the first frame, but tough pink to the middle. That was queuing supreme. Yeah. To play that sort of position of that type of shot just sweetened the pot, didn't it? And Ronnie being the player that he is, I think he'll just try and pick up the pace and try and, try and win this frame quickly. 30. Thirty one. It's difficult to put pressure on Ronnie O'Sullivan because he plays his own game, but he's going to have to show Judd in this match today that he's not too wary of what Judd does. He's got to play at his own pace when he gets in tight like this. You know, that fluent style that we're used to, Ronnie. Works out better than this. Ronnie O'Sullivan, forty six. There's a definite sense and a feeling out there, I think, well, this afternoon that Ronnie is so aware of his opponent, and that's the thing. He knows that if he leaves Judd in this type of position, he's liable to lose the frame. Is it going to happen this time? We don't know, but the way they're sitting, the way Judd's playing, that's what Ronnie will be expecting. I think it's the biggest compliment you could possibly pay to Judd Trump. In my mind, I'm thinking he's favourite here. Four. I went in this frame to to come back. Eleven. Twelve. Yeah, can't play for black this time. Nineteen. Just depends whether that red by the pink is on. 
and he just flicks it or the pink here playing up for blue or brown and it obviously goes the way he's played that 20 so they're all there Six. This is critical now that he gets either straight or high on this red. He doesn't want to be messing with the pink when potting the red. first thirty three Well, this could so easily be the crunch ball. Yeah, I think this is all right now. He'd love to be able to reach it. I think he can reach it. He's obviously a very tall lad. And reach it. Just play it with a just a hint flick of right hand side. Good thing doesn't have an awful lot to do with a cue ball. Obviously wants to be sure, but it certainly looks like it's it shouldn't be a problem. Thirty nine. Judd Trump then is going to produce the first piece of pilferage in this match. 46. What a frame this would be to win and what a time to win it as well. 3-1 up at the mid-session interval. 48. Yes, from here, numerically, the clearance to blue will do. <sighs> 51. And I must say, I've been very impressed with Trump. No great fireworks. But boy, does he mean business. 55. Since the time he won the English Under-15 Championship at the age of 10... He's had the skills. Six now six he's got the steal. And at the interval, he's also got the lead. Trump's made the better start. He leads Wally O'Sullivan by three frames to one. Early days, but he leads three frames to one at the mid-session interval. 
Neil Folds and Stephen Hendry been enjoying this one. As I said, it's early days. We gave this one top billing, but Stephen, who has been the star of the show so far? Uh, there's no doubt about it. Judd, Judd Trump, um, Ronnie O'Sullivan looks looks completely different. Uh, his body language looks completely different against Judd Trump than anyone else in the game at the moment, and w- with good reason. The last time they played, he lost 10-4 in a major final. But considering the way he played, Ronnie played at Preston. Um, a little bit surprised, but um, you can't take away, uh, take away from Judd Trump. He's been very impressive the first four. Well, it, you say that he looks different when he plays against Judd. He knows Judd's beaten him before in some of the big matches. But Ronnie's so canny. I mean, this is a man with huge mm. experience, huge success. How can he let one player to do that to him? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think that it, there's so many players around that don't fancy it very much. And we've said that all season, really, that some of the lower-ranked players just roll over when they play themselves and say, OK, well, I'm, I'm frightened to beat you and I won't do it to you, you know? <laughs> um, it's not ideal, but there have been players like that. Stephen had plenty of players who would have been the same against him, you know? Um, you just get that feeling. But he knows that Trump isn't quite in that category. And as Stephen said, he was taken apart in the first session of the Masters. It was best of 19. Um, and it was 8 and 11, the same as this in frames. And Trump led 7-1. And that does leave a mark, you know. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has not had that happen to him very often over the, in his career. He started well. And Judd, of course, had those misses, mm. you know, had those fouls. How much does it hurt you when you get into a good position in a frame like this and then it slips away from you? Well, I mean, the, this, this, the, the, going to see here, this is a magnificent safety shot from O'Sullivan. It really is. He's, he's got Judd Trump and all sorts of problems. And he, and he gets a, you know, a good few points and fouls from Judd Trump. And then from that... He's got it gets left a medium long range long red which he misses. Then he gets in again, misses his pink in the middle. Okay, there's pressure on it, but it's not the sort of Ronnie ball Sullivan. that you expect Ronnie to no. miss, even under pressure. No, there is pressure on it, as you say. The pink and black went safe, but it was a very good break from Trumps with the pink and black not on. That was a typical Trump shot, you know. He's in tremendous potter of the ball, despite all the other things he's good at. He's still got that that he's always had, really, you know. This was I mean, this only just went as we can see and um, and it just crept in off the top draw, jaw, you know, and he was could say lucky to be on it, but he played it bravely to hit that far draw, didn't he? Mm. This, this was a, good, a lovely shot. He's, he's pretty straight in this red. Better left-hand side in the cue ball. Struck it beautifully to get the cue ball out for the black. Uh, he needs one more red to secure the frame, so he needs to move one of these reds. And you see it here, plays it nicely, leaves it to the far right corner. He's a tremendous player with those cannons, isn't he? Mm. He's always been. He's an unbelievable cannon player. He knew he get, couldn't really push it anywhere but up the table there. You know, onto this frame, you know, the thing to remember is that, uh, you know, Judd is such a tremendous potter on the ball. You know, we see a few examples of it in this frame. You know, and he's, he's so difficult f- to keep out, even though Sullivan, his safety, has been brilliant lately. Yeah, he plays a snooker by Nebrow, and he did have the option of the green into the middle here. It's just, it's just a what You guys can't leave him anywhere when, he, when he's confident. He's, there's no safe place on the table. Yeah, and he got a nice nudge, but he deserved it because he played, you know, such a good shot. And then this shot, actually... I think you picked it out, but it was a nice shot because he, he lands in an area where he's going to be on something. Yeah, l- lovely amount of top spin in the cue ball. And, you know, th- there's an element of luck to that. To, he left himself the perfect angle on the red just to drop on the pink to the right middle. Um, but he just plays those shots so he gets so much action. This is a shot that, that I, I admit this is very, very unfortunate to, to leave um, a tricky red to middle. But in Preston, Ronnie Sullivan, the way he was going into the bunch, he had a, he had a, had a reason for doing everything. He would hit the, the, the right red in the bunch to, do, to get the, the result that he wanted. That was kind of a hit and hope. It was for him is a bit surprising. Pay for it, wasn't he? Because the brown followed by this, just a trace of right hand side to straighten that. So, you know, when O'Sullivan didn't get on that red, he actually mm-hmm. paid for it, the, the worst penalty. He lost the frame in the end. He's playing well, Judd Trump, mm-hmm. but Ronnie O'Sullivan, a long way to go in this match. Oh, it's a very long way to go. I mean, a, I'm not discounting Ronnie O'Sullivan by, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, uh, you know, I think there's still plenty of snooker to happen in this match. And the re- it's coming up on the other side of this break. We will have the final four frames of this afternoon's session. Judd Trump leading. Ronnie O'Sullivan, three frames to one. Can he extend that? So the next chapter in this fascinating story about to get underway. Judd Trump with the edge coming back okay. after the Thank interval, off. leading 3-1. Four more frames to play. Thank you, frame five. And then they return Trump tonight to, to play through to a finish. What's clear is what we already knew from the Masters and other matches is that Judd Trump is not intimidated by Ronnie O'Sullivan. Some other top players are. He isn't. Got no reason to beat. O'Sullivan's pot success, 85%. Long pot success, 50%. These are stats you feel have got to go up in this little mini session. Got a little one. 
there, Renner Sullivan. A little bit too thin a contact on the bunch of reds. But in the end, he's got an excellent cue ball. Same scoreline as it was after the first four frames in the Masters final. And Judd went on to win the next four frames to open up a 7-1 lead. His target will to win this 4-3-1 this as well. Give him a nice 6-2 cushion going into tonight. Down to one table now. So we'll be right through to the end. Of course, the final is a three session final. Best of 25. I mean, there is a shot on here. If he takes this red to left corner, he can cannon the red to the right of the black, which would leave the black to the left corner. Choosing the safety option. It's interesting. Looks like Trump forgot his chalk. Marcel Eckhart, one of the referees, just appeared and handed it to him. No attempt at the pot. Just get that cue ball behind the yellow. Stop running yourself and playing the red as closest to the yellow. You can see enough of the red just to get a thick enough contact to. When he's looking at bringing the cue ball back, playing that red, bringing the cue ball back to bolt, but where's the red going to go? Obviously, doesn't want it coming up and down the table. Which it is doing. He's made a mess of this. He'd be lucky to get away with it. And he has been. Colour, but he can take control of the table. This is why, even though this is a long match, you know, it's first to ten, the early frames are so important because, it's, as we know, if O'Sullivan goes off into the distance early on, he's such a great front runner, he's very hard to catch. Good but well, if you can get him under pressure early on, then this might be a different story. I mean, he's under it here.
So Trump like well, the trap with the snooker and they can take advantage here. He's this uh, season's leading century break maker, 69 to his name so far. Nice little shot, just nudging that red away. That was to the right of the black spot. Eight. Nine. Another wonderful positional shot. He really has, in the last season or so, really honed that department of his game. I always thought his cue ball was very loose. But massive improvement, as is, as shows by the amount of century breaks he's making in the last season or two. Also, in the amount of clearances he's making these days to pinch frames you can't do that if your cue ball's constantly going round the table 14 15 20. Played the cue ball into an area there where if he didn't get on the red to the left pocket, the one he's going to play, have the one to the right corner pocket. That was plan B. 21. <clears throat> there. Shot didn't go as planned. Not wanted to be straight on either of these reds to left or right corner pocket to play for the black. This shot is normally no problem to judge Trump. Again, look at that. Perfectly on the blue. He really is in the zone. Yeah, of course, we talked about the Masters final, but he also beat O'Sullivan in the Northern Ireland Open final, which was a very close match, 9-7, which proved that when the pressure was on, he could do it as well. 34. Could so easily have gone out yesterday. Mark Williams was in front, controlled the match, led 8-5, just couldn't quite finish him off. Forty-seven. View the tip on Trump's cue there, and not a lot of meat on it. I reckon that'll be getting changed possibly after this tournament. Two more massive events to come one in China, and of course, the Crucible, where Judd will be certainly in the top two or three favourites for that. The way he's playing. Mm, that looks like end of break. 55. Wanted to find the gap between those two reds there. It's the problem when you're playing into the bunch from high in the black, you're coming off the cushion. If you hit the red that you make contact with in the bunch, full ball <coughs> stick. That's what happened to Judd there. So 
no, no cover safe. All the reds in the open. This frame is far from over. Got to be very careful. So I'm always thinking about possibly playing a double on this red. And the cut to the middle. No, it is the double. No, it's a safety shot. <laughs> it confused me. 55. Trying to put a red safe. It's a decent effort. Yeah, of course, Crucible, a month away. As it stands at the moment, these two are seeded to meet in the quarterfinals, but things can change. O'Sullivan can still, of course, go to world number one. At the moment, he'd be the third seed. Trump would be the sixth, but that, that can all change before Sheffield. I think a lot of people would love to see these two in the final. Well, he's caught the safety too thick, Trump. Offered a chance, wasn't absolutely guaranteed, though. And you can see O'Sullivan, as I say, he's on the back foot here. Not getting many clear-cut chances in this match. Well, this was a, it was a half chance at best, but as you can see, a long way away from the pot. Isn't it that thin? Tends to indicate deceleration in the cue action. And all that does is give his opponent even more confidence when he sees we're only missing the ball by that distance. This isn't a gimme. Made it look like it. Trump won. Well, it's from this position in behind the green. O'Sullivan left a red on to let Trump in for that 55. It's got him in front in this frame. Trump looking for red and a colour for 4 1. Wow, a Trump for. We're well, now just looking for this red. Whoa. Uh, looks like he, he's look, looking at the scoreboard. He, oh, Sullivan does need a snooker, but not on a colour. Well, you would presume that was a bad contact. Joe Trump, what? Fortunately for Judd, as you say, when he's a snooker now. Yeah, Trump pushed the black to the cushion to make it more difficult. Sullivan soon enough, not in his Fred head. Trump. Trump's got him well and truly on the back foot here, playing good all-round snooker. 
is Trump and he's leading this semi-final by four frames to one. Gallon or Neil Robertson. Of course, if O'Sullivan were to win the title, he would go back to world number one, which would be a great achievement. He's not been top of the rankings since May 2010, so that's nine years. Would underline just how well he's played in the really big events the last couple of years. But at the moment, I'm going to concentrate on this match and these three frames. I'm going to try and get something out of this session now. He could win two of the three that remain. He'd be very much in touch coming back this evening. Yes. Nice pot, it's a blind pocket. Didn't know 100% where the cue ball was going to end up, but he has got a pot of some sorts, pink to the left corner. Should drop on the red to the left middle. And you think if the century breaks something like win, certainly winning a frame at this visit would certainly. So. Uh, Renis will have a huge boost getting back into this match. In a minute, this looks a little bit subdued. Partly due to the fact that he's been outplayed by his opponent, obviously. Eight. I don't know how quickly Renis Sullivan can rack up frames. Sullivan, that's clumsy. He's still able to pot this red 15. to left middle and screw out the bunch, but well, it goes without saying how more much more difficult this positional shot is. Beautifully played. Beautifully played. 16. I think there may be a red, and you just see it poking out the bunch. That's a lovely red to play to open the reds up. 23. In this with screw. It's 24. It was almost as if I made contact with a. He didn't do it, it was like he, he made contact with the wrong red first. That's why the cue balls end up in the black cushion, and this is an extremely tough pot. Made more so the fact you're 4 1 behind. Oh, that's brilliant. Thirty-one. Yeah, it's such a big shot that was. Sort of looked nonchalant, 32. almost knocking it in. Forty. No doubt about his discipline. We saw it in that marathon frame last night with Stuart Bingham when the blues over the pocket, red strap round it. There was a time when you just know he couldn't be bothered with that, but he played real hard match snooker all the way through 45. that exchange. <coughs> 46. Just coming around to see where he wants to leave the cue ball for this red that's to the left of the Four reds and pink to the left corner. Mm, 49. It's too much angle just to drop with the black to the right corner pocket. Yeah, 
to just brush the cue ball off the reds, which has played to his advantage actually. Just got right side of the blue. So this frame coming up to the five minute mark and getting pretty close to Ronnie Sullivan securing it. That's how quickly you can rack up the frames. 55 56 Just what he needed this afternoon Sixty-three. Sixty-four. So this is the ball that's going to take him to the snooker's required stage. Well, a terrific response this from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Should try and control that last frame. Just one chance, one sniff of a chance is all it took here. 70. Yeah, that black, when the cue ball ended up on the, the black cushion, was the one that will really give him that confidence. That was a great shot under pressure. He missed that. He was staring down 5-1. 78. Serving out a little notice to his opponent, he's still here. 85. 86. I think the red is on to the right middle. Unless they see it pretty close to it, but black for the century. <laughs> Wonderful break. It really is, because it did look under pressure to me. Tremendous response. Sullivan yeah, 100 exactly from Ronnie O'Sullivan, exactly what he needed to get him going in this match. And remind Trump there is a match on. So Trump now leads 4-2. Left to play here this afternoon. I think whatever happens in them tonight is unmissable, isn't it? It's going to be a memorable evening, I think, with these two possible 11 frames to be played. O'Sullivan's just made 100 exactly to cut the gap, the gap to two again. Yeah, Judd Trump would like to at least get one of these frames to guarantee a lead going into tonight's session. Poor break off though. Ronald Sullivan's long pot success down at 42%, only 5 out of 12. That's. Well, you're just going to struggle to create your own chances against someone like Judd Trump. Not putting a low pot success. Need, it needs to be up to around about 70. Yeah, Sullivan was watching anxiously. It's the red that he missed came back across the table, just came away from the pocket though. Take your pick, the red. 
You're right, a corner pocket. Neither are easy, really. That's why he's not even... Looks to me he's not even looking at... I don't know why he's decided on the one to the left corner. Probably play this with a touch of right-hand side. More a safety shot, really, than a pot attempt. Well, and this, what else will I vote for? Yeah. I Can you bring it up, please, Leo? Colin Humphries has requested the assistance of Leo Scully on the marker. There he is. Get this white right. That way. Okay. Thank you. Tentative first time, just a little bit more pace second time. Ronnie O'Sullivan is the first player Judd Trump actually saw play live. His dad took him to the Welsh Open. They lived in, in Bristol. Welsh Open was in nearby Newport when he was just eight years old. And now look what he's doing against him. Yeah. And Ronnie's long pot success stats. Okay, he's gone for 12, and so Judd's well, only gone for six, but Judd's got five out of those six, and he's 83%. Okay, the majority of that shot was safety, but excellent pot he found. Gave him the chance to take the upper hand in this frame now. Yeah, this is where his game's changed because when he first came on the scene, would have knocked in the red and then tried some crazy shot on the brown and tried to just keep the break going but he's learned so much discipline playing these other top players and the point is it's working for him now he said at the Masters he said I know the crowd love entertainers but they also love winners oh and this it's it's under hit Yeah, there was a shot earlier on in the match as well. He could have played a green to left middle after a long pot. Played the roll up behind the brown. What? Went towards him winning that frame. Brown. Brown Fuck. 
six. Again, finding that area, right side of the blue. Eleven. straighten the pink, I may need to hold the spot. Pink may have to go in the black spot. Hmm, he's not straight. So he's just checking to see where the pink's going to go after he pots it. He gets a nice angle on this little red that's just to the left of the bunch. He'll be able to pot it and open the reds. Just measuring the spot to see the pink spots or not, otherwise it's going to go behind the pack. It does go on its spot. Thank you. 18. I know I don't play anymore, but I'm so jealous of all these players that can play with both hands. What a talent. Yeah, you didn't do too badly with your right hand, in fairness. Twenty-one. just feels though here that O'Sullivan's raised the stakes with that century and Trump will feel right, I've got to respond now. 22. So I've just got to give this pink a little bit of attention. 22. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I think it's plain sailing now to get to the winning line of this frame. Won't be worrying about the black. Twenty eight. Twenty nine. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. This red now clears the pink. So the Forty-two. Left pocket. It's always the easiest way to make a break around there using the pink. Now it's available to four pockets. Okay, the black scores higher, but it's only available to two, so if you need to make a break to win a frame, it's always nice to have the pink in the open. Gives you many more options. 49. 50. Pink. Put his opponent in the snooker's required stage. 
57. As you said, David, good response to that century break from Ronnie Sullivan in the previous frame. Although, yet again, I think his opponent will come back to the table as he travel far enough for the red. I think just. Sixty-four. Yeah, he's played another really good frame. Long red, laid the snooker, and from the chance he got, he's taken out the frame with a big break. It sets up a huge last frame in the afternoon. Six-two or five-three. Main thing for Trump is he knows he's in front. Sixty-nine. Coming back tonight. Judd Trump, 69. So a break of 69 from Judd Trump. He goes three clear again. Big last round coming up this afternoon. Trump leading O'Sullivan, 5-2. Here O'Sullivan getting great support from this Clandudno crowd. He knows he'll be trailing, but by how many? Big frame, this. It's only eight to see Trump just checking with the referee that this is the last frame of the session. Yeah, I think if we go back to the, one of the stories of this afternoon is Ronnie Sullivan's long pot success, 5 out of 12. If he'd have got, say, 9 or 10 out of 12, he'd have created some chances and the scoreline might be vastly different. felt when I was in the position that Judd Trump's in now. You really, really want this last frame to extend that lead going into the second session. So I was kind of deflating when you've been by far the better player and you only come out with a two frame advantage. Okay, it's an advantage, but you do want that gap to be as wide as possible. Well, Sullivan eyeing up this long straight red up and down. Just needs good queuing. And that was, well, anything but, I'm afraid. That's been the story of his afternoon. Yeah, it's definitely made a difference. Just because he's taken so many on, he's taken on 13 long pots, got five. Look at that, he's down at 38% now. In. It's very rare running. Sullivan's pot success is under 90%. It's down to 85. He's going to get a chance here, though, to increase that. Judd Trump, two. The pressure black missed by Judd Trump. If that went in, well, he knew if that went in, there was a chance to get that four frame advantage. Delighted, but be very pleased to come out of this 5 3. This is the beauty, I think, of these long matches for an audience. This is such a key frame. It's frame 8 of possible 19, but it's where it is in that 19. It's the last frame of the session. Frame they're both desperate to win. Just added to the pressure on them. Judge lining this up. Hugh Ball's not going to be able to avoid the bunch of reds. Judge 
put it safely in. Eight. Nine. Going back to Judd. When you've dominated every stat, you've played by far the better snooker in the match. You feel like you've got to justify that while having that four frame advantage. So that in itself puts a bit of pressure on this break. Sixteen. Oh, you just finished slightly the wrong side of the blue. Doesn't give much away, Trump, but you just see the slight annoyance there in his face. Just kept on running. Twenty one. Something's on this red though too. This corner. Twenty two. chance this and of course it comes from 29. Trump first missing that black but then crucially O'Sullivan missing the red to the left middle to let him back in again 30 Just lost the cue ball. Forty five. <laughs> well, this is a big shot in this afternoon session. Oh, fantastic. He really got into the white there, didn't he? That will make him feel so good. Oh, he just hits those shots better than anyone in the game. Yeah, it looks so easy. 
Then with an element of safety. And obviously those shots are easier 5-2 ahead than 5-2 behind. Bravo. Hmm. Not sure about that one though. And now there is Judd. 50. Potted the brown into the right side of the pocket thick, which took the pace out of the cue ball. This is definitely missable. Let's come around to see if the red behind the pink is available to the left corner as an option. Yeah, that was very missable. Very Jokes left the cue ball. 50. But I'm very fortunate. So he leads by 52, there's a possible 75 on. I think this red does pop past the other one near the pocket. Yeah, you can see there, it goes. Yeah. Bottom line for O'Sullivan tonight is he's going to have to improve. Pot success at 83%, long pot success 38%, he's behind in the safety as well. There's time for it to happen. Clearly the early frames tonight are going to be crucial in this match. Seven. Trump still needs this black. O'Sullivan at the moment can tie. Well, there's no doubt he's played the better snooker in all areas. And it looks like... Barry Snookers is going to be four frames in front coming back this evening. Joe Trump, 40. We've seen comebacks already in this tournament. We know it can happen. We know Sullivan certainly got the game, but at the moment he's looking for improvements. Trump is looking confident. Four. He's already beaten O'Sullivan, remember, in two finals this season. There's no doubt in my mind that eight. Ronnie Sullivan looks slightly intimidated by his opponent at the moment. Judge Trump, eight, and a four. Well, we'll see what happens tonight, but Judge Trump will be very satisfied with his afternoon's work. He's just four frames away from a place in the final of the Tour Championship. He leads Ronnie O'Sullivan at the halfway. Well, there we go then. It's the mid-session <laughs> interval and Judd Trump has um, dominated this opening session. He's taken a 6-2 lead into this mid-session interval. Uh, guys, what have we made of that? Complete domination. He's not been winning a lot of frames in one visit, but it's testament to how well Judd Trump is playing right now. Just the overall standard. Um, 
he's got a Sullivan on the run, it seems, almost every frame. And Ronnie hasn't played all that badly, Neil. I don't think he has, no. I, th- I don't think so. I think, you know, Trump at the moment seems to have the sign over him. Uh, and that's the point, you know. And um, he's not frightened of him, and that's the key. And a lot of players, we've made this point, I hate to keep repeating it, a lot of players are, but he's not phased by him, you know, and he gets in and plays his normal game. Maybe he feels playing O'Sullivan, Alan, that, you know, the pressure's off him a little bit. You know, he feels pressure against other players. Playing Ronnie, he doesn't feel that because people don't really necessarily expect him to win. Yeah, well, I think the record that he's got in finals, that alone yeah. put, puts him in a comfort zone going out there. I think this afternoon... 6-2 in front, we're seeing here Ronnie th- this, it, it, I mean you it's expect diff- Ronnie to get close to these reds but it's a difficult shot though isn't it, I mean uh, it's almost there well, what do you do, I mean he, in the end he's stuck where he's well, unmissable this. actually but it's look it's not an easy snooker to escape from is it, you know he's playing second fiddle in all departments, this was a beautiful break though, this showed you that Sullivan was still there he got out of position, that was a lovely flick and he continued along those lines Alan to make a century yeah this black was the best shot of probably the session but even by both players and just played a lot of them Little cut back, nice little cannon, made a nice hundred, but that was the, the, really the only highlight of the session. It was, you know, and uh, you know, it's century number 1004 in his career. He plays that shot delightfully. There was one frame there of O'Sullivan playing like O'Sullivan does against everybody. You like this shot, it only just passed the red near the pocket, didn't it? Yeah, how this finds its way through, I don't know. Doesn't doesn't catch the red in the way, and he's so dangerous in the long game. That's the thing that you've been seeing. Given headaches, I mean, Ronnie O'Sullivan is, is 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 very difficult to play, you know. But then Judd now is almost doing what Ronnie can do, playing with his wrong hand, <laughs> screwing back like that, opening the bunch up. Yeah, you know, he's he's the one player that seems to be able to match him in everything at the moment. And this was a chance. Judd had missed that black, and you think, okay, this is your chance, Ronnie, to to get it back to five three. When he misses that red, he's never in the frame after that, is he? The thing about that is he normally, in those situations, he really knuckles down and you yeah. expect him to get that. It wasn't that difficult. There's the cue power we always talk about with Judd. Actually, this next little red, I don't know if we're going to see it, but he pots the red beautifully and, uh, well, he goes on. Well, what about that? <laughs> this is another great shot, you know. It's he, 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 frightens you when you're playing yeah. someone who can do that, you see. You know, you're sitting in your chair... You think this guy can pop anything, and yeah. um, uh, the way they're going in as well, they're going making a great sound into the middle of the pocket. You know, he's, he's queuing quite beautifully. Eighty-eight percent long pot mm-hmm. success rate for Judd Trump. Yeah. You know, as you say, from all over the table, five from fourteen for Ronnie O'Sullivan. That's not the Ronnie that we've grown used to watching. He's not getting these long pots in. Thirty-six percent long pot success. It's all right doing that against normal players, but this ain't normal as opponent today. You know, Judd. It's not just the, the, the stat of Judd got a high percentage, it's the quality of the long balls he's been knocking in, added to the fact you know he's going to score when he's in close, that's why he's got Ronnie on the run, he's got him in the back foot, and I don't see how Ronnie can do much about this if Judd continues in this form. He's going to hang it on to uh, Trump's coattails at the minute, but he'll reset Ronnie, mm. you know, he'll go up, he'll not panic, because no. 60 down, we saw Neil Robertson do this yeah. against to 10 this Mark time. Selby, and it is yeah. first to 10 significantly. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's over, I really don't, only because I remember when it was 7-1 in the Masters in, in the, the night session, uh, Sullivan came out all guns blazing, and I remember Judd Trump saying, I was pleased to hold him 3-3 in the evening, because he knows that Ronnie can come out, and at 6-2, first to 10, you know, Trump's not in the final yet, and he knows that. So it's just a question of whether Ronnie comes out and, and, and plays well tonight, and then he, then he, we might see a blockbuster evening still. That, that first mini-session is going to be absolutely vital. It's going to be fascinating. You don't want to miss it. Massive. Uh, Ronnie has to win it 3-1, as we always say. I, I, I agree with Neil. He's not out of it, not by a long chalk. He's still right in there. What will he bring tonight, do you think? Well, I think tonight, if you're Judd Trump, what you want to do is just match frame by frame. 6-2 up, you don't mind drawing the first session 2-2. As long as he's not making up that deficit early, then you'll be ha- if he did Judd Trump, you'll be happy. Yeah, I think the same. Uh, just frame for frame, Judd will be happy to just nurse the, his lead to the winning line. Yeah. OK, let's sit. remind you then, when we're back here on ITV4 this evening, 6.45, as we said, Judd Trump, the apprentice, is 6-2 up on the master. Who will get there and heads over the line and into the final of this Tour Championship. We will be back in a couple of hours. Looking forward to this one. Thanks, guys. The first to ten frames for the right to face either Mark Allen or Neil Robertson in the final. And play will get underway shortly here at Venue Cymru. Hi, good evening. Neil Folds and Stephen Hendry join us for this one. But before we hear from them, if you missed this afternoon's session, here's Phil Yates with a recap of how Judd Trump built up that 6-2 lead. 
The King against Snooker's Crown Prince was always going to be royally entertaining and no one left disappointed. The pink refused to drop for O'Sullivan in the opening frame, but Trump was metaphorically in the pink as he drew first blood. O'Sullivan replied with a 64 break to tie the scores, but then the younger man began to command the exchanges. Frame four was especially meaningful. On 46, O'Sullivan went into the pack, landed on nothing easy, and when a red went astray, Trump stepped in to steal it with a 66 clearance. Trailing 4-1, the rocket powered in his fourth century of the event, but Trump wasn't about to be intimidated. A well-crafted 69 break secured frame seven, and O'Sullivan didn't pot a ball in the last of an afternoon when he was comprehensively trumped by Judd. So, 6-2 to the Crown Prince, the King in danger of being dethroned. However, I think you write off Ronnie O'Sullivan at your peril. Stephen, um, it was a disappointing opening few frames for, for Ronnie, but he stayed in the match. But he's going to have to come out swinging, isn't he? Yeah, the, the one thing he's got to improve on is, is, is the long potting. Uh, I think 5 out of 14 is, is the stat, and that's not good enough because if you put a long ball, it, it doesn't necessarily give you a chance to win the frame and make a big break. It can give you the chance to roll up behind the colour and put your opponent in trouble and, and give you control of the frame. He's not been doing that all afternoon. What did you make of, of Ronnie in these opening exchanges? Were you surprised at the way the match developed? Not really, because we've seen it once already you know, this season. I know that Judd's beaten him twice, but the second time, you know, in the Masters, he led 7-1 at, um, at the Alley Pally, you know, where Ronnie's just the king there. He just absolutely annihilated him in that session. Not entirely. I agree with Stephen. You know, he's not getting in enough with his long game. Uh, and when he does get in, you, I fancy Ronnie would score as usual, you know, brilliantly. But he's not really getting the chances and he's not keeping Judd out either. And, you know, Judd has made a very big dent in getting to 10 frames by what he did this afternoon. Yeah, let's take a look at what happened then a bit more closely this afternoon because uh, we saw Judd actually down the table practising on the, 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 the game table earlier on and he looked very comfortable and as soon as he walked into the, the arena he just looked as though he, he meant business, didn't he? He's, he's full, for some reason, I mean, this season, he's, he's full of confidence when he plays Ronald Sullivan. Um, he's, he's just up for the challenge. He, he thinks he can beat him and that's obviously the, 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 the biggest thing. We're seeing an example of, of you know, some of his potting and the way he moves the cue, cue ball around. I mean, this, that, that's actually a difficult shot. Very difficult. Right? I made it look easy. Very difficult shot. And it's not just long pots, is it? It's, it's shots that he can play. I mean, there's a bit of Ronnie there because that was with his right hand and he played a brilliant shot. He's great at coming through bulk. I mean, it's one of the, I've never seen a player so good at coming in and out of bulk from, you know, colour to red like that. He does it on the black and goes around the table. He does it on the blue with lots of cue power. And he's very difficult to keep out because he can do this as well, Stephen. You know, this is just class. I mean, he can do that. Robertson's, Sean Murphy's can play that shot, but Judd Trump seems to do it with a minimum of effort. It's just all time. It's just natural talent. OK. Uh, I'll take a break there because it's time for Alan's angle. Now, Alan has spent some time down on the match table and he's going to give us a little insight into where he thinks Judd had the upper hand today. Judd 6, Ronnie 2 going in tonight. For me, it's been similar to the Masters final. He gave him a real chasing then, and he's dominated this afternoon also. Let's look at some of the reasons why. We know about how dangerous he is with the long game. Cue ball and the bulk cushion, he can pop them in. It's when he gets his hand on the bed of the table. He cannot be only, he's not only dangerous then, he gets ultra creative. He played a little shot, long red, flicks the red away from the black. was a beautiful shot. Something else you've got to love about Judd Trump. In this area of sport, we see a lot of people tinkering with their techniques. Judd doesn't do it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Judd played a couple of shots today with some close-ups. He tends to cue to the right side of the ball at address, but the key to it is when he comes through, it's through the middle. So don't worry about things like that. You know, I, I think if Judd went to a coach, some people would say, oh, no, you have to go and change that. No, stick with what works. That's what's got him here. Stay with it. Ronnie's got a big job tonight. Obviously 6-2 as we know, and with Judd on the charge, he's got it all to do. He misses nothing, Alan. No, Even no. the way that you see Judd you know, approach the ball, he misses nothing. No, nothing I don't think Judd will be particularly worried about the way he's addressing <laughs> the ball, mind you. No, it's a complete unique, it's a complete natural. You can see 
especially when the camera's right behind him playing a straight shot. He, he's aiming to the right of the cue ball. It looks like he's, he's missing the, the object ball completely. But the important thing at striking point is bang on line. Uh, and the point Alan makes is a good one. You've got to stop him getting his hand on the table. Here's examples of actually with his hand you know, on the cushion rail, which is a more difficult, still knocking him in. That was a great shot there. And I think the next one is also a thin cut. The same story, hand on the, the cushion rail. We know that he can pot them anyway, but he's such a difficult man to keep out. You know, full stop. Look at this. It goes just past the other red. And I think we see one at the point that Alan's making. He just devours these sort of shots, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's the ultimate lampshade player. He used to say that. Pots them <laughs> off the lampshades. There isn't a lampshade there, but if there was, he could pot it from it. Yeah. We saw Neil Robertson come back against Mark Selby at 6-2 mm. down. Yeah. Uh, wrestling his way back into the match and just applying pressure on Selby. Is that the kind of thing Ronnie can do? Is he, a, is he great at coming from behind like that? Uh, for all his talents, for all the things he's brilliant at, best, best of all time, that's not one of them that, that he's known for, is coming back from, from well behind in matches, is it? Not really, no. I mean, he, in a longer match, I have seen him... You know, do it. I mean, in the World Championships last year, he was behind 6-3 against Stephen Maguire after the first session and won. So, look, he can do it, um, but it's not really his forte. His forte is to be a front-runner, but he's not going to stop missing these sort of shots. Yeah, that pink was a surprising miss. That was in the very first frame. Um, and, and, you know, that, that kind of shown how the pressure he's under right from the word go, really. Yeah. You mentioned the long potting uh, problem. You know, his long pots weren't really going in today. What would you have done in the break if you were Ronnie? Well, I'd certainly practice it. If, if, if he really, if he really wants it tonight, if he's really up for it, um, you'd have gone to the table um, with you know Steve. He's working with Steve Feeney and say, right, and and working on that long game. That's that's what I'd have been doing. If you if you really want it tonight that badly, I mean, he's just not getting in. That's the problem. Enough, you know. I, I still believe that if he wants to get in amongst them, he mm. he's probably look. Like he's a better score than Trump. Actually, he's better score than anybody. But Trump is getting in more, and that's why he's winning so heavily. Yeah, we're talking about this being the blockbuster. You can see why these two, of course, have won the two previous events in the Coral Series. Um, this is the uh, match stats from today, though. That long pot success, as you mentioned, 88% compared with 36%. And, I mean, to be fair, Ronnie hadn't potted a ball nearly for half an hour before he went in after the... Uh, at the break. It's, it's very, very rare that you see Ronnie Sullivan's just the general pot success under 90%, isn't it? Yeah. 82% is ridiculous. Okay, he's only won two frames, but it's ridiculously low for someone like Ronnie Sullivan. And the long pot, okay, he's gone, only gone for half as many as Judd Trump, or, or twice as many, but that's poor 36%. He's made the only century of the match, Ronnie, so we know he's scoring okay and we know he can score okay. And um, he's just not mashing it in all the other departments right now. And it's like anything else, if you're not getting any chances, you're not going to beat somebody, especially a guy that does not fear you as much as other players fear you. Mm. Yeah, and another stat to throw at you um, Judd didn't score any centuries when he won uh, in the Masters. He, no, he, that's he right. got 10 frames. Um, he didn't make any centuries, but he made a, very, a lot of very telling breaks between 60 and 80 in that final. And, he, and as Stephen has said before, he took him apart in that final. And that might be just in the back of both players' minds. Mm. Important first few frames for Ronnie tonight, isn't it? Oh, but he's still very much in this. If he wins the first four frames 3-1, he's, he's right back in it. OK, yeah. let's get to it then. Commentators, Phil Yates and Alan McManus shortly. First, though, to reintroduce the players, here's Phil Seymour. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Coral Tour Championship here at Venue Cymru in Clandidno. <laughs> this is the first semi-final, it's the best of 19 frames. It's time now to welcome the players. We begin with a 10-time ranking title winner. He won the first leg of the Coral Snooker Series at the World Grand Prix. He's a reigning Masters champion, the ace in the pack, Judd Trump! A seven-time Masters champion, a seven-time winner of the UK Championship, and a five-time champion of the world, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan! <laughs>
if he's going to avoid being swamped, uh, Sullivan needs a quick start. We know he's more than capable, okay. but he will have to improve Thank you, and gentlemen, on this afternoon's show. Trump in the driver's seat. Of that, there is no issue, no debate. Bad for starters then. Tony O'Sullivan is going to have to start dictating tonight. That's the kind of... Right, he's going to have to start knocking in. Eight. So he's already done something he didn't do in frames five, six... Sorry, five, seven and eight, which is to pot a ball. He was blanked in those Nine. three frames. O'Sullivan at his best, Alan, is so formidable. The way I look at this, potentially, he's 45 minutes away from 14. being level. Yeah, 15. He's, not, he's not one to panic, is Ronnie. He knows that there's a long, long way to go. Of course, it is first to 10 this evening, rather than first to 9 in the quarterfinals. He does have that. Just extra bit of leeway. But, uh, as we know, must get off to a good start this evening. Mm, looks quite satisfied. Seems to be on this red. 22. Twenty-three. I think especially early on tonight, he's going to try and pick the pace up just to... Just a touch. As Phil made a good point there, you know, if he gets himself going, we know what he's like and Phil, Phil cry. Might knock a couple of frames off in, in jig time. Yeah, clever. Cannon, impossible not to be on one. The shot Fish. played. And it has to be said, as I mentioned in the review of the first session, in the fourth frame he went into the reds quite nicely and was unlucky not to drop on something easier. Little things like that make a big difference. Thirty-one. By the way, our tournament sponsor, Coral, were offering O'Sullivan a hundred to thirty to win the match at the beginning of this session. Three and a third to one. It could be value. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Forty-two. 
53. Yeah, the bottom red, although the pink spot doesn't go to left corner, so he's going deep here, he's got to hit this sweep. Little one of them will go. That was sweet as a bag of sugar, that shot. That was a beauty. 60. The expression suggests consternation. Yeah, as long as it's just a soft cannon in the red. I played to shove them. Yeah, that's just fine. And what a start. Sullivan fans out there, hoping the man to come out firing tonight. This has been 68. the perfect start. There they are. Hoping for a close contest tonight, I'm sure. Well, we all are. 76. Worth remembering, last year the Players' Championship was here in Clondidno and they met in the semi-finals, these two. Different distance, O'Sullivan won 6-5 from 2-0 and 4-3 down. So not the, quite the same level of comeback, but... 82. Goes to show he's got fight in him. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 82. Deprived of the century, but not of the frame. Red from distance, big break. That's a recipe for success. It was short, it was sharp. But was it a shock to Trump? Mentioned early on this afternoon, this is... The danger ball. You don't really want to believe in Judd. How's he feeling tonight? What? There's your answer. Another crunching pot. Sometimes even the very best have to trust to a certain amount of luck. 14. Well, at least there's a pot available. Fifteen. Did well there. Did really well, not just to pot the red, but also to hold the cue ball. And now a position of promise. Yeah, that's not the kind of break off that Ronnie's looking for. Not in this company. Eighteen. 
Yes, in nine ball pool, the break off is massively important. Not quite so important as in snooker, but you should never disrespect it. Twenty-five. That's that one shot tells you a lot about Judd Trump. Two years ago, guaranteed he would have attacked a bunch of reds off that. Biding his 26. time, building the break. Firm stun. There's the power. Oh, that's unlucky. That is unfortunate. 31. Well, if he's not on the red to right middle, that actually might do him a favour because that's such a, a horrible shot to take on, bridging over not one but two or three reds. It's actually a horrible position he finds himself in here. He might have to get the long stuff out and somehow try and find a way to get the cue ball in behind that red near the corner. You can obviously see this red to right middle. I think if he could possibly land the cue ball just the top side of that left middle pocket. He's looking at the low side of it. One of those cases, Alan, and they do crop up from time to time where a player has been penalised for a good shot. Yeah. He's just looking at the low, just low of the middle pocket. It's a clever shot. It's also quite clever because he knows he's leaving the red in bulk. He's tempting Ronnie to maybe try and play an aggressive safety shot off that. Very interesting little passage of play here. He's dangled the little carrot and he's just hoping that Ronnie miss hits this and loses the cue ball. That's why Ronnie's taking his time having a second look. This ain't going to be easy because the butt's going to be in the air. Easy to impart some unwanted side. Played it nicely. You just got to hope he doesn't leave a red behind the black spot here. That's the danger, and there's the red. He's left it. This you just now feel is a huge visit of this match. Only Sullivan can take advantage here. And that was the worry, pushing a red down between black and black Four. cushion.
all three Thanks. frames that O'Sullivan has won so far. They've all been by relatively seven comfortable means. Breaks of 64, 182. If he could pinch one, he might have lost. That could have a, a bigger psychological impact. Only been left-handed here, he can get that, that right-hand side on this. He didn't want to trickle onto that red, the right half of it anyway. So he got the side to come the left side of the red. Pink is on too. You saw the split second grimace just before he played that shot. I think it's because he's knocked the three reds close together and they're a little bit awkward. Twenty-eight. Always interesting the order that you take the reds. You take that red there because now you can play for two off this one shot. Okay. Red to middle, red to corner. Already thinking about the way to tackle those reds, fellow was thirty-five. Mentioning as he hits the front. Thirty-six. At the very least, the two together to the left corner are an offset plant that you'd expect him to get, but that'll be a last resort. Which he might have to settle three. for now. He's coming round to look at the offset plant this time. Yeah, now he's seeing it. I think if he plays it, yeah, touching, pretty much touching. If he plays it, it's almost guaranteed to get it for me. Crowd in, you can hear a pin drop. So we size up the plant, here it goes. Yeah, the only, I mean, the pot's guaranteed for me. The only proviso I'd put in it is the red that he's going to can in the top one. He doesn't want to push that to the left cushion. Oh, well, that is a Ronnie shock. O'Sullivan, a 50. real shock. And I think Ronnie, is, as shocked as I am, could not see for the life of me how he could miss that. He just played it too straight. Four words, let's off the hook. Not recommended against O'Sullivan. What?
23 points the lead, so red, colour, red. Five. Now then, decision time. Do you leave a mid-distance missable red? Or brown to try and get in tight behind it? It's the mid-distance red. You want to screw it on and off the cushion. Yeah, that's well played. Yeah, that gives you just the shot you want. Always use the cushions in shots like that. Two. Frame ball then. Fourteen. Sixteen. Played this so positively, didn't he? Didn't bail out with the cue ball either. Full commitment. He's back to two behind. 19. Twenty eight, thirty four, breaks of fifty and forty one. O'Sullivan this evening has come out swinging. The gap erodes. Trump's lead is down as he breaks off in frame 11. Anyone who suspected this could possibly develop into a runaway needs to think again. Should be tempted here. The red second left. The two is a possible. Not the one nearest the corner. No. He's just having to defend just for the minute. You've got to love best of 19 matches, don't you? Swings and momentum, winning frames in bunches. Ronnie's the man with it. He's the present. Yes, I know Sullivan's pod success rate is now improving to something like its normal level. Still a little below what we normally expect, but. It was 82% at the start of this session. Now it's up to 87%. 90 really is the benchmark. Certainly for him. <laughs> oh, and that cue ball just glided and glided and glided. Fantastic shot. Played it as well. Again, perfect contact. As Phil said, the bed of this table, like grease lightning. 
to Cushion Glancer then. Pink is a danger ball, could catch it full. Oh, well done. Two reds then, to below and left of the pink. Doesn't want a big Bounce bounce this. here. He's not Joe gotten Trumpful. it. He's worried about a free ball there just for a yeah. second. The only thing about the two reds he's trying to hit, the second one, the one that's nearest the pink, he could catch that quite full. from Ronnie because Judd, Judd in his chair knows that Ronnie won't steal a millimetre of advantage when he plays this. Ronnie will play this on a feeling. It'll be the feeling that he had when he played it first time round. The marker assisting our referee Colin Humphries oh. is Leo okay. Scullion. Between me and you, so it's all a millimetre, so do you want me to move it slightly to the right? It's close enough on the screen, you see, yeah, yeah. so do you want me to go a bit further up there? Yeah, as I say, Ronnie it's will play this on the feeling of the last shot he played. He'll have that muscle memory right now, so yeah. he won't... OK, John, thank you. ...pinch anything. <laughs> Almost immaterial, because the shot's difficult. Close, wasn't it? Yeah. There was a situation out like, like this this afternoon, wasn't there? Sorry, Judd was. Uh, I think he had three or four attempts, didn't he? Just trying to learn the shot, and he Same got again. it right fourth or fifth time. Yes, in the opening frame, actually, he turned a negative into a positive on that occasion, and O'Sullivan with the right contact here, could do exactly the same. Just needs a flick, that's all. Foul, the miss, Judd Trump for. Yeah. Just as I said this afternoon, 12 penalty points is a small price to pay for eventually getting it back into the safety of bulk. Thank you. Foul, the miss. Shut Trump. Free Foul. ball possibility. No, he's just OK. Thank 
foul. Miss. Your trump foul. Yeah. Groundhog Day, a month or so late. Yeah, just thinking as well. You know, I've heard a lot of people, pals, and such like, have Thank you. criticised the miss rule. This is where, for me, it's actually brilliant. You've got to hit a red. Simple as that. He's all right, but for a possible plant at the pink spot. Yeah, Judd not showing any interest in it, so... He got away with one there, as Ronnie, but... Sometimes you just earn your, your luck. He did work for it, didn't he? A must figure of eight has to get a lot of this red. Yeah, he did get lots of it. Brilliant shot. Where's the red? Where's the red? No, not this time. Calling all pockets, none of them listened. Yeah, I don't think Ronnie can quite pot this straight enough to be able to hold for pink. to see if he's got pink to right middle and play for both I actually fancy him getting on the pink here he'll be playing two cushions with a, a kind of a kind of stun come screw and he might even brush the three reds well if he brushes this single red in the face this is perfect what just slipped past it didn't it see I was expecting Ronnie to get a bit deeper into the cue ball there I think the pink was a possibility to right middle. Now this is a toughie. Ronnie O'Sullivan. That what? really was asking an awful lot. Turf pot in itself. All of those reds down that end of the table. He knew it could be really expensive. And now, what? Trump's best opportunity of the evening so far. I think, Alan, that's another difference with Trump. Eight. 
of late. Seen him in situations like that in the past, and he's got at things like a bullet a gate. Now he just sort of sits back, calms down, composes himself, and gets on with it. Although that particular white has got away from him to a degree. basically so much more well-rounded 15 16 he's always been lean now he's mean and a winning machine 17. put the phone off please I think that's the first mobile phone I've heard ring all week. Yeah, it's a good point that Phil made because as a snooker player some of the hardest work you have to do is actually when you're sitting in your chair preparing for your next visit you have to be ready to take these chances when they come along especially when you're under the cosh which he has been this evening so far along in his merry way here a bit to do. Yeah, trying to be aggressive. And the Reds. Reds no problem here with this bat well. <laughs> Will be a problem because he'll do well to reach this from the green pocket. Well, the branding iron or the swan neck offers maximum elevation, but are they lengthy enough? Yeah, the other thing is he's right-handed with a rest, Judd. So it's actually a bit more awkward. See, if, if he played with the, the rest left-handed, he could probably reach it. for a pot. He's going to need it if he's going to cut this red in. He's hoping to play it as a shot to nothing, mind you. Possible cannon on the green. Cue ball probably going around the, the brown spot, that sort of area. Oh, what a shot. What a shot that is. Eye for a pot, did I say? My goodness. And that really is instinct, because when the cue ball and object ball are so close together and you're potting into a blind pocket, you've got to be working on intuition. Wrong. Brown ball. Oh, the only kiss... only kiss that was going to hurt him there was cushion first and full ball. The only criticism is why is he flirting with this red at all? Why is he coming on and off the black cushion? Yeah. Maybe being a wee bit hypercritical, but I guess we'll never know. Yes, and because 20 of Trump's points came via penalties, there's still an awful lot of points on the table. Ample for O'Sullivan to get back into the frame. Just 
Judge Trump, 43. All of a sudden, this frame's got different complexion to it, doesn't it? We're only pushing that red out. Danger written all over this safety shot. Where's the red going to go? Doesn't really want it travelling too far. Hitting the black's a bonus, actually. Settle for that, we'll run it. Now, Sullivan has produced so many massive clearances to win frames in the past. Now, I think it would be incorrect to say this table is ideal for a counter-attack, but... It's certainly one he could work with if he got the opportunity. to catch this red super thin. Not bad. Yeah, see he's not all that intent on trying to snooker Judd there. He's just trying to leave Judd in a situation where it's difficult to not push her head towards that left corner. Or at least open that little cluster of reds up a little. Expect a couple of them at least to move here. Cue ball going close to the green pocket. Close to the green pocket. Yeah, well played in the end. If there's anyone in the game that can play this shot, it's Judd Trump. He, the play in the pot, he's going to be playing it not so much with deep screw, it's just stun, trying to kill the cue ball almost where it is. Chance of being on pink, but doesn't want to shift other reds. It's 
exactly what he's done, and Ronnie O'Sullivan has a chance for the counter-attack. Possible chance to win the frame now. Yes, and bringing out the black was a double whammy. but the control on that shot was unreal. You get the blue back in its spot. I agree with you, Phil. Ronnie O'Sullivan down the years has been the ambassador of the ambush. 14. Is he about to produce another? Fifteen. Well, getting the blue back on its spot helped by also freeing up the yellow for a little later on. He knocked the green safe just before he got in, actually, ironically. That might be the saviour ball for Trump. As it's turned out, it's the white that's the saviour because that was an absolutely thumping kick. Well, the red went as well. We've not seen too many kicks this week, Alan, but that was a horrible one. Yes, it sure was. That wasn't Ronnie's fault. Part of the game, I'm afraid, and Something that I, I feel will never get rid of. And that was a kick in another sense. It's transformed the whole vibe of the frame. Green ball. Yeah, the only, only good thing. Try and get that green out. Oh, yeah, he's played that Ronnie lovely. Sullivan, 23. Good shot, good concentration. After the disappointment. See it again, the red just jumped, didn't it? Yes, that was one of those kicks, actually, where both balls were affected. The, the red jumped, and the white, all of the, the backspin was drained out of it. Dinky is this. What a shot that is. What a safety. <laughs> Very unfortunate Ronnie can get this. This red. I can even repay the compliment up behind the bulk colours. He's got it, you know. When a player makes a mistake, they say the balls don't forgive. 
Maybe they feel sorry for O'Sullivan after that kick. Not round the back of it, is it? No, good shot. Well, last night, on the way to sing off Stuart Bingham, O'Sullivan played a 49-minute frame. This one is going to be over half an hour for sure. Don't worry, folks, he's not slowing down. It's just the way things have gone. little tempter then is it worth it where's the value quiet please oh, is it the back of the auditorium just Upset and judge concentration. So reset. No, oh, by James, what a good shot that is. Oh. Bravery, heart, courage, or anything you like wasn't attached to that shot. Forty-six points ahead as he consults Seven. the scoreboard. So this red will leave O'Sullivan requiring snookers. So it looks like the old long game being back on point. Just in the nick of time. Eleven. Oh, see, it's not how, it's how many. John has got his first frame on the board tonight. It looks that way anyway. That red confirms it. Twelve. Yes, both have had bad luck in this frame. Trump a couple of times positionally. O'Sullivan, obviously, with that monster kick. In the end, though, the younger man gets his first frame on the board this evening. Thirty-one. 
Joe Trump, 31, and a friend. Joe Trump is keeping Ronnie O'Sullivan at arms. And it's also worth bearing in mind that Trump is holding sway, even though his highest break is a modest for him, 69. Yeah, Ronnie has developed a little habit in this match, hasn't he? I think almost every break off he's left this red. See it again. A dangerous business leaving this type of shot. Crunching on red. Whoa. He actually hit that a little thick, and at that pace to go in, to me, was a wee bit of a surprise. Yeah, he just muscled at home, didn't he? All that was a pile driver of a red, a red above the black will go. Mm. For the one right of the bunch, just about on it. Six. Seven. Yeah. Is he straight enough to play this without using a cushion? Yeah. Oh, he's taking his eye off the pot. Joe Trump, seven. Don't you believe that? He's thinking so much about the cue ball, he's completely forgotten to pot the blue. Well, this requires historical context. Mid-80s, UK Championship final, Willie Thorne missed an unmissable blue like that. When he was in command against Steve Davis, eventually was beaten. In snooker, we call it a Willie it's... Thorne blue, don't we? And that most certainly was. Nine. Yes, there it is again. He's as shocked as the rest of us. That, that blue knot disappearing. Yeah, there's going to be a case in point here. I don't think Ronnie's going to go into the pack. Stephen made that point. Break builds in a you know, slightly different way these days. There's a couple of loose reds you can still build from. Going into the pack was risky. 16. So the skills he has around the pink spot. Why not wait a few? Thirty-two. Last chance then. Good angle on a colour. Oh, he's got it too. He's got it. Standards. 40. That was a little clumsy. No long red on. 33 point lead, the way the balls are. Well, far from decisive.
Ronnie O'Sullivan, 40. Trump might have expected to have been more heavily punished than that. Pushing on the red safe. That's what he'd like to do. Yeah, he's hesitant with this one because the red could go close to yellow. If he pushes the white into the corner. And he knows how deadly Judd is. But he doesn't want to risk that. Yeah, he pushes the red safe. See, that's all right. I always think in these situations, if you're Judd Trump, don't be too bothered about pushing a red safe yourself. First things first, the way this frame, the way the table's lying, try to get back in the frame. Try to get the next chance. Don't be too... I say, Ronnie's going to push this safe here. But don't worry about that. That's going to happen. Just accept it and move on. And his left one, as I say, you're not going to win the frame at this visit, but get yourself back in it in some shape or form. Yeah. thing is if you do get yourself back in it all of a sudden Ronnie needs the the, <laughs> the tough reds and I say there's no point in fretting over things that are out with your control at the time for the time being anyway. Seven. Judge Trump, seven. Another pot that no one expected, but you saw there the red jumped. Hope we're not going to start seeing a lot of kicks. And it's a really scruffy table now. Wait. 
Yes, it must have been a kick because as soon as he's back at the table, Trump's asking our referee Colin Humphreys to clean the cue ball. <laughs> it's funny actually, Judd getting the cue ball cleaned there. It's almost like players do this a lot. It's almost like telling everyone, by the way, that last shot that I missed, it wasn't my fault, I got a kick. This, Alan, is the kind of frame our colleague Stephen Hendry <laughs> tried to avoid like the plague. you just got to be patient. Yeah, so we can do it. Yeah, Judd, happy playing the drop on. The drop on the red, but I was thinking that th this kind of situation as well. The Reds will come out eventually of their own accord. It's just you've just got to wait for a chance to get them in the open. It will come though. Here's one of them coming out now. Is that this full in the face? Yeah, good shot. And another. Yeah, he's going to open them all up here, is he? Playing the screw into them, is he playing the pot? Played the pot. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful shot. Well. Disappointed with that, but you know, he's just about back in the frame now. Once upon a time, you could have it's given Judd Trump the run around in this type of situation. Those days are no more. Judd Trump, eight. Yes, and also, once upon a time, Ronnie O'Sullivan might have become frustrated and impatient. By and large, those days are no more. He occasionally lapses, but very rarely. Another cracking pot from Trump. But this table is such hard work.
cracking pot again. Nicely on the black. The green being off its spot then just helps this shot. No real risk of any cannon, so in behind the red. This looks good actually. Your Trump eight. Yeah, it may look negative that, but I can see his thinking. He, he's thinking, I'm not going to pot the red and get any sort of angle and a colour to promote any of these two reds. So he's thought, well, why risk it? And not a bad ploy. This frame actually wasn't really big in an earnest in, until these two reds are in play. Will he risk here getting tight to green and yellow? Or is it bulk cushion? Yeah, bulk cushion. <coughs> and spring the reds into play. Very, very cagey stuff again. He yes, isn't there in one fell swoop. The frame just opened. Bonus and through that gap. I think this frame is a classic example, Alan. He's not getting out Fox, does he? Trump. Those days, as you say, are over. He has to get some pace in this red now, Ronnie. He doesn't want to leave it near left middle. See, trying to inject pace in it. Good shot. That is excellent. That was quite dangerous, that. If you just try to park the cue ball in the corner, you could have left the red dangerously near that left middle. Absolutely fascinating end to this last frame of the first mini session then The red that Ronnie's pushing back up table here. I, I wouldn't. I just want to push this just past the blue spot. See, you don't really want to push it to the bulk line or into bulk because it leaves quite an easy safety shot. You see that? Just little small things in the game you've got to just be aware of. 
<laughs> I'm not saying Ronnie's not aware of it. No, we are other than this game, but you see, the, the point is there now. He's got a chance about it, it beating in behind Black playing this. Sometimes the obvious safety shot isn't really the way to go about it. Playing side to side. Yeah, that's Ronnie's own making the trouble that he's... Well, not, not massive trouble, but... Fascinating stuff. I do believe though that la the last shot that Judd played, he should have really tried to get in behind Black. Wasn't massive risk attached to it. Well, it's gone now, obviously, but. The white past the line of the brown. No hampered queuing. I hate making calls, but I fancy him for this. I think his back swing's a wee bit longer tonight. Yes, yeah, sure. I think his potting's a wee bit more on point, a bit more reliable. I just got a little feeling about this shot here. Sometimes it's something feels right. <laughs> Dangerous thing to predict, but and also the the pressure might be off a little because of the awkward right on the, the left hand side of the table. Yeah, you didn't even have to look at that shot. Just listen to it, sweet snooker symphony, crack in the back of the oh. pocket. Back in control then. And the angle to push the other red into play if he wishes. If it's a natural, he's in business here because he'd be naturally Eight. on the pink. Just, just caress the red. Just a few inches. Beautifully. Not all that nice on the pink. Yeah, no wonder he's building himself up for this brown. This will take queuing of the highest order. That was not easy. Ronnie O'Sullivan, nine. Look around the table, look at everything that's left, and you know it's within Trump's capabilities to do this. 
Yes, the cue ball will be travelling quite some distance. The biggest problem looking ahead would be potting blue to get on the pink. Brown to blue, no bargain either. But we can't discount him. Yeah, what he's thinking about here is Trying to get an angle on the yellow, pot the yellow and shift the blue first time round. It's a good piece of thinking, actually. Whether he chooses to go about it that way remains to be seen, but you know, the cannon on the blue off the yellow, you'd be hard pressed to see him not have some sort of shot in the green. He's gone deep here in the green, so he may well be playing that, is he? Yeah, he's playing it. Well, he's not playing it for certain. He's still thinking about it, but I think there's big, big, big value in it, because brown to blue as things stand, he'd be hard-pressed to get nice on it. Cannon on the blue, then. this. Ronnie doesn't need the blues thing, stand. Good shot. Nine. And crucially, there is an angle there. Maybe not as much as he would like. The crowd applaud, but he needed to be wider off the cushion. Yeah, that's why he tried to shift the blue. He shot the goal, wasn't it? Good thinking all round, to be honest. Your Trump. 13. He was watching the blue there with keen interest. He didn't want to nudge the black close to a cushion because he needs it. He needs all three colours. Sullivan only needs blue and pink. Yeah, playing the snooker, pushing the blue back up. Can he hold the cue ball down in this corner? Well, nope. double kiss. Needs it to travel. I think it just about has. I think he's just about gotten away with this. It's potable, but control wise, very little doing. He takes the pot on. I suppose if he plays it thin, the cue ball up and down, the one thing you'd expect the blue to maybe go up the side cushion if he missed it. Oh, good shot. Oh, where's the cue ball? Oh. That was cruel. Smashing pot. Now we know how good O'Sullivan has been over the years with these blues to the corner pockets. Will the cue action deliver at this critical juncture? <laughs> 
You better believe it. And of course, with the five penalty points from five. the in off, Trump now needs a snooker. We've just seen back to back frames of half an hour. Marathons for these two, but O'Sullivan won't mind in the least. He's bang back in this match. Semi final from 6 2 down, Ronnie O'Sullivan no trails Judd Trump. Five frames to seven in this best of 19 frames match. Enthralling match here. It's like watching two grandmasters of oh. chess uh, uh, at the table. Um, Stephen and Neil enjoying this one. Has we said before this one, he Ronnie had to come out and win this mini session mm -hmm. three one. He's done that. Has momentum shifted? Um, I think the, the interval has come at a good time for Judd Trump to, to get over the, the disappointment of going in off that blue that he potted in, in the last frame there. Um, but yeah, Ronnie's come out, he's, he's done what he had to do. Um, not you know as convincingly as maybe he would like, but um, he's right back in this match as anybody's now. Very absorbing uh, snooker, isn't it? You know, it's not all about big centuries. It started off with Ronnie coming out of the blocks quickly and all that, but as things went on, you know, it became a little bit tactical, a couple of half an hour frames. Um, this is how Ronnie started. I thought, you know, he just looked good at the beginning. He had to start like this. I don't think he could have started as that mini session ended, you know. But um, played some good shots here, opened the bunch nicely. Yeah, it, we, we mentioned about the, the long point they had to improve, and that was a nice one early, early on in the first frame to get. And um, yeah, this was a, this was exactly the start he needed actually. Um, some poor break offs from both players, leaving that long red on. It's been left a few times. This was. In, in the second round, very unfortunate for Judd Trump. Played a good shot into the into the bunch. If he lands on a red there, look at the way the other ones are, are spread. He probably would have won that frame. This plant, we, we weren't sure about this because it looked to me like he had to hit the top side of it. It was a squeeze plant, goes the opposite direction, but maybe the other rib was in the way. And uh, he was surprised he missed it, but it was one of those that was in the in the lap of the gods, but he wasn't punished because Judd missed this straight away. You know, and, yeah, uh, the, way, the way he's been putting, you would expect Judd to get that. There's a different pressure when, when you're a long, long way in front. You come out in the evening and you know you, you want to get a good lead, but sometimes you, you're under pressure to, to not lose the match rather rather than to keep keep the momentum up. But for this, you know, it could have been all four frames in favour of Sullivan because he was coming back into the frame. That was a monstrous Horrific. kick. Horrific kick. It was like is. something out of the Flintstones, two rocks hitting each other, you know. It was nothing to do with snooker. And it stopped the balls going anywhere that he wanted them to. And then all of a sudden, you know, Trump knocks that in, you know, and it won him a frame that, that he could easily have lost. Mm. Could have actually turned the, turned the match back round in, in Judd's favour. That this, this red is is definitely missable, but that was frame ball. Eight. Yeah, and he needed that frame, and of course things got even more nervy here. This was a, mm. a frame that felt very important. I mean, look, I feel he's unlucky to go in off this. I have to say that. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's the, the pot's that tricky. He's not really thinking about where the cue ball's going. It's always going in that general direction. But I agree with you, it is unlucky for it to go in off. But this was a superbly cued blue, really was, because he'd missed a brown earlier on by a long way uh, with one red left. Difficult yeah. to predict what's going to happen now. You know, as I said, mm. best of 19. Uh, Judd three away from from securing the, the place in the, in the final. You often see it, if, if he goes... 8-5 up, every shot then, Ronnie, has to be pinned perfect. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously Judd shouldn't be uh, panicking too much because he's still at two frames in front and, you know, Ronnie's got to play probably a little bit better than he has been and uh, I think what we're going to do is really enjoy it because from now on in it's, it, it's going to be some, some brilliant snooker and a few very tense moments. Mm. And the one thing Ronnie will be pleased with is the way his long potting has improved in that mini session. Yeah, very much so. And, and he, he looks different around the table. You know, he's kind of when he's in his stock on the table, which, he, you know, he's, he's you know, walking around looking at things, whereas this afternoon he looked a little bit subdued for me. Yeah, can we call it at this stage? Well, mm. I, I still believe that, you know, Judd has got the edge. You know, I think that little kick that Ronnie had, it makes him probably think, well, you know, what have I got to do here? But uh, he's come out fighting tonight, so of all credit. Stephen, are you going to call this one? Um, this stage? I still think Judd's got a little bit, a little bit extra, but um, it's, it's, it's really tough to call. It really is. It's enthralling, isn't it? We it's can't wait good. to get it back underway. Uh, on the other side of the break, the conclusion of the semi-final, mid-session interval. Judd Trump leads by seven frames to five. This Trump, is the fight 13. to the finish. Judd Trump to break. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has given himself every chance, winning that dramatic pre-interval frame. First to ten into the final. Judd Trump getting us underway in frame thirteen. A couple of lengthy frames there at the end of that mini session. Which maybe wasn't what we were expecting with these two, but they're both excellent in all departments. They showed it in the safety game. Well, they are, Dave, but also they're both 
human beings and they're suffering nerves, nervy frames, frames that went a little scrappy. But they were always, always very absorbing little passages of play in all those frames. And I suspect we might get more of that because they've been so easy, even for these two, that you just clear up every visit. Yeah, there have been mistakes as well. That adds to the intrigue. But in the end, Trump unlucky with the in-off, you've got to feel. And Sullivan pollied a good blue off the spot. Sort of blue you'd expect him to get, but there was pressure on it at this stage. So Trump just quietly sat with his brother Jack, just having a quiet chat in the interval. And that's been such a difference to him, of course, this season, having Jack here, someone he's able to talk to during matches, before and after matches. Yes, I mean, to lose that session 3-1 is not the worst outcome imaginable when you've already got a four-frame lead going into it. To lose them all clearly would have been no good at all. A lot depends on what happens in the next two frames, I think. But it's been a horrific game. It's had most things. Lots of nerves. A couple of close frames as well, like the last one we saw. I think in general, this week, we've seen how this sport comes into its own when the matches get longer and there's time for twists and turns. Something you usually only see in finals or, of course, at the World Championship where all the matches are over a long distance. I think Jack certainly can get to the side of the bunch, so it's not that he's in any trouble here, not really. Wouldn't want to hit the punch too fat because he would potentially leave a red over a pocket. Thin contact required. I think the safety play between these two has also been remarkably good. It doesn't surprise me, but again, it's not you know, the first thing you consider when you think about their game. You think of your John Higgins and your Mark Selby. Safety and tactical knowledge, but these two have got everything. <laughs> that one could have been very good with just a little bit more pace on it. Sullivan in a bit of trouble. A clear shot at one red, but if he's going to play it thin, he's going to hit it accurately. Trump is just ever so slightly winning this battle. Again, Ronnie O'Sullivan has not got a shot at many reds.
and he, he didn't want to play the, the red to the right, which he could hit oh, completely. Because it's quite for. hard to catch a thin edge. He might, if he gets it put back, play the other red this time, I think. He might consider it, because it, he can definitely get to it when the balls are replaced. Yeah, I don't think he could miss it altogether the way it was first put down because the blue would have been in the way. I think that's about yeah, right. Thank you. Bit off the cushion, it's Marshall, Judd saying that, and it's yeah. against his best interest. He's going to check with Marcel Eckhart, the marker. He's got the freeze frame in front of him. And we get the feeling it's bang on. That way. Certainly the line looks to be right. Yeah. As I say, he has got a clear shot at a red, so he has to be okay. a little careful here if he misses the second time. One thing that could see O'Sullivan through is his application. He could not have tried harder in this match. There was no carry on with the referee there, was there, like we saw in the last tournament. Just wanted it right. <coughs> Trump as well, battling for every opening in this match is a proper snooker match this isn't it really enjoyable it hasn't all been huge breaks flying in but great match play Yes, and he's left a long red, but I don't know whether Judd will fancy it all that much. After long bouts of safety, these long parts seem more difficult. Ah, brilliant. No problem. Potting was not blunted by that safety exchange. No, he's three out of four for long passing. It's excellent from Trump. Well, he really got hold of that. Five. If anything, too much. Same thing, it was screwed, like the shot I mentioned a couple of shots back. 12. To the point where he's not on a red. Well, he's looking at plant here, I tell you this. He said he had a bit of a brain freeze in his previous match when he went for a shot in the last frame of Blackbush 
really was a very ambitious this plant is it the right shot at this stage oh, these reds are a long way apart this is tough I don't know if that was kidology or not. But from <laughs> 12. I don't think the plant was the right shot, and he even he thought it in the end. He's not missing any of those middle to long range shots, but once again, it's no good. Not to continue the break anyway. I think he believes that he could cut this in potentially. If he missed it, he would leave it over the pocket. And he would block the pocket. That's a good shot. He certainly would have blocked the pocket, but it's even better now. He feels that there's a plant on. I don't Seven. think it's as difficult as the one he looked at previously, but he's still going to make it. He'll cut the first red quite thin onto the second one. Well, he's trying to stay positive and trying to keep breaks going here, even though it's a pretty unpromising looking table to get from colour to red. Well, <laughs> what a shot he tried there. Tried to hit the reds, break the reds open off the yellow. Ten. Yeah, I'm sure he feels that if he plays aggressively, Trump, it's ten. a way of getting O'Sullivan on the back foot, showing him that he's going to go for his shots. He tried something special here to put into the reds. Didn't quite come off. And on the replay, as you see, the cue was always going to arc away from right to left. Top spin on there. And this frame taking a pattern not dissimilar to the one in the previous couple. Highly tactical. Eventually the ball's going a little awkwardly. Well, he's knocked in over the corner pocket. Just wonder whether Ronnie would consider playing cushion first here. Taking a risk and trying to get the, into the reds and make things happen. Don't have to. But he could play right cushion, swing the cue all wide, and potting this. And that's what he tried to do. Goodness me. Exactly what he meant. 
<laughs> well, let this be. Well, he had to take a risk, but he didn't pay off. away from all the all the, the reds Ronnie O'Sullivan one Let's open things up. It has. It's another very good shot because you can only really get to one red there. You can see these safety shots go unnoticed occasionally, but they're both playing some good ones. This is another tough one as Sullivan is faced with. Again, he's knocked a red towards the pocket. Difference this time is, though, the reds are now open. Previously, O'Sullivan tried to get into them to get the game open, but in the previous shot Trump played, he did open them. The blacks in play. Yes, he's faced with a, a, a similar sort of a problem to the previous. It's not easy to get the cue ball out of that little corner on this shot. And you see it, he couldn't help but cannon the red, whichever way he played it. He played with lots of drag and left-hand side. But if he plays the pig, it's very difficult. It's not a nice angle, this. No guarantees of being on a red either. This tremendous shot. He's not behind the red, but I'll tell you what, that was a very fine pot. Seven. Eight. That was also very good. Again, no applause or anything, but he hit it beautifully. I feel this is a very big point in the match. We've had a few already. This feels like another one. He can make a few here and win the frame. He's right back in it. Going into the session 6-2 down, you can make very few errors from there. Eleven. Very nice atmosphere in here tonight. A lot of people, but they're all engrossed in a pin drop. Two. 
17. I just feel this one positional shot away from being right in. It's not that the reds are that difficult to get on. They're not badly placed. But from where he is, it's not so easy. The wrong end of the table, so to speak. I don't know if he'd have been on one had he not just glanced off the pink as he did. Certainly changed direction and the pace on the cue ball. He wanted to give himself every chance of being on something. Now he's looking at the plant. Again, it's not easy. He will surely running away though if he plays it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 22. I don't suppose we'll ever know, but certainly that, as I say, that little touch on the pink totally changed the position on that last shot. And Trump is relentless at that sort of range. What? The shot I meant, it, I say, just flicked onto the pink. And that seemed to make all the difference. having the cue ball cleaned. He's not uh, been winning frames necessarily with big breaks. He's been getting in front, making enough. 69 is highest break of the day. Eight. He wanted to be straight on pink, really, to run through easily on the red. There's a bit of an angle on it, but he can still play to get on the red, albeit not right behind it. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, very similar. <laughs> exactly. And uh, with the red further down the table, at this time he can't get on the red. He's brilliant at going in and out of bulk, though. It's one thing he does, swinging the cue ball around the angles. But even then, it's going to be tough to get on one this time. I think he's looking towards bulk. <laughs> Away this time of getting back round the table. Well, we've just had a frame of 21. just under 33 minutes, a frame of 31 minutes. This has been going just under 25. Trump's 24 in front. Still three reds on, though. I guess he's happy to see the red on the right side cushion. Well, I'm going to miss. 21, Joe Trump for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Ronnie won't have it put back without having a good look at this. The reason Trump played it so thin was it a thicker contact. He might have hit the black. Ah. Hardly anything in it there. Probably having it put back would be favoured because missed again. It would be the three strikes and out would come into play. 
We're going to check again with the freeze frame technology. Thin. Well, this that changes everything because it's almost a carbon copy because he hit the jaw of the middle pocket. Well, but now, yes. of course, he will be warned Ronnie Sullivan, that if he plays the same shot and misses again, he'll lose the frame. So Ronnie will surely have his put back. Yeah, and the other difference it makes is that even if he hits it this time, he will now need the red on the cushion. Yeah, I think you're right about that. But for now. He's he's got to just hit one, hasn't he? He might have to take that red off the cushion, actually. You OK with that one? Yes, got to hit one, otherwise it's 7-6. The okay. There's the warning from referee Colin Humphreys. We saw it with Ding Junhui did it in the Masters, lost a frame in this way. He's got to play a different shot. He can't play the thin shot here. It's risk presenting a frame to O'Sullivan. I think he should consider playing the right-hand red, even though it's the safe red. Because, like you say, he needs it now anyway. He didn't want to play it before because it was in his favour being there. sign as well for O'Sullivan because his long potting hasn't been as stellar today as it often is. Nothing wrong with that one though. Well, the next shot is very big. Again, can he get in behind that red? It'll be the right hand red of the two. The pink is a more difficult pot than the blue but it offers better position. Very cool. Seven. Eight. That's very surprising. If he's not on it, and he certainly believes he isn't. Uh, he's just got to think differently now. Held better than he thought he could. He's got to take the positives and say, right, I could put him in trouble here. He's got a very good chance of getting a snooker. Keeble somewhere in behind the brown or in that sort of line. He's very close. He could possibly play it with a trace, but even then he wouldn't be on the red perfectly. Trace of left-hand side to straighten the angle. Or, if he thinks positively, he could put Judd in a lot of trouble. Now well, he's playing safe off the black. Ronnie O'Sullivan, eight. Tell you what, he's very close to being a brilliant snooker behind the brown ball. Again, Judd trying to hit this red thin. It's the same red he was trying to hit thin earlier. He missed a couple of times. The 
this is a very tense passage of play it feels i'll tell you what neil i don't think at the start of the day we would have predicted that in this match there'd be three successive frames of at least half an hour didn't seem likely but that's what's happened Every frame huge as well. Eight five or seven six here. Yeah, and you think every shot the next few is going to be huge because whoever pots the red is very likely to win the frame, you'd think, where the remaining balls are. Doesn't want that one back. The kind of snooker which you haven't got a great deal of control over where the balls end up. Foul. Again, Trump, he'll be Trump, more than happy with that enough. The audience feel that he's unlucky, but I don't think he minds finishing there. No, it's more about where the red finished. It went safe. Trump leads by 12. Well, this is now the longest frame of the whole match. And we're just coming up very shortly to four hours playing time for this contest with plenty more to come, you would think. was walking around he thought it was his shot and think that was going to drop in well it's given him a, a slight headache of his own actually not the easy shot to play a snooker behind the pink dropping in behind that wouldn't be a lot of fun you might have to play something like that pink ball They've actually both played those sort of one. shots very well. The roll-ups, usually, of course, the yeah, bulk colours have been played with great touch all day. There's another one. And this frame is a very odd frame. Now we know what a potter Judd Trump is. Is he going to risk this yellow along the cushion green and brown are there probably winning the frame he knocked in a red early on actually in the match not dissimilar to this one he's not playing it I don't think I think that's where he's going to end up a better player all round, proving more of a winner because you can't always go for those shots. If you don't fancy it, you play safe. That's always been the golden rule of playing snooker.
not a ball on its spot. <laughs> As I say, we maybe didn't expect three lengthy frames in a row from these two, but they are just fighting for every single point, every opening, every chance. A bit anxious having played that. He knows he's left something for Judd Trump here. Cue ball guaranteed to head down towards the green. Pot obviously not easy still. Called it thick. There's always a worry when you do that. playing a big shot here. The pot is difficult. Yellow to green in position is difficult. Didn't get anywhere near it. That was a mile away. Judd Trump needs yellow, green and brown to get to snookers required. Surely not. So, has the blue gone in front of the the green? <laughs> you couldn't make it up. It's very tight. Of all the things that could, could happen on that shot, that was not one of them. I think it goes, but it's a, potentially not a full pocket. When he got in behind it, he felt it was on. Yeah, it looks like it pots, but. It's tight, isn't it? If he catches the blue, it's not going in. Yeah, and you mentioned he needs the brown as well. Getting onto the brown from that isn't easy either. There's problems everywhere. <laughs> oh, what a shot that is. He has over-screwed it somehow. I don't think I've seen a ball struck better the whole week. The cue ball absolutely zipped back. That is timing. Almost too good. Well, you hear commentators say sometimes he's hit it too well. I think that applies there. He's hit it too sweetly. I know. That is just unbelievable that he's finished where he has. Every shot is so difficult. Judd Trump, five. So there uh, you see it. Trump needs the brown, O'Sullivan needs them all. What a dramatic frame. 40 and a half minutes. Well, that's a uh, good attempt, Judd Trump, because he only needs the brown and he could drop this in, not even think about playing on the blue, and it would be frame ball, barring snookers. 
has to be a little careful he doesn't snooker himself though on the, on the next ball. Oh, that's a big relief. Oh. Only one snooker, not quite over. Sullivan is compelled here to have a go. So Trump fought. getting the snooker. How's he going to do it? Not on this shot very easily, I don't think. <clears throat> oh, well, when you get one good chance with the pink and black left. Fuck. Because obviously your opponent is going to roll it in or over the pocket. First opportunity. Ronnie O'Sullivan, fuck. It's not been a classic frame, it's been a gripping frame and feels like a pretty crucial one if Trump ends up winning it. No breaks of any note in this frame. All the others have been at least 40. Barrage of breaks. Not, a, not even a 30 break in this frame. Most unusual. chance for Trump to put it away. Problem is, Black, if it was further up the table near the corner, it would be easier to get in behind. It's not actually that simple where it's placed to get the snooker on. Good effort. Once again, not there, though. Trump obviously looking to avoid any in-offs or anything untoward happening. One snooker. End of frame. Yeah, the longest frame of the match. Just shy of 45 minutes. This is a real nerve shredder, but that's an important frame for Trump to win. He just holds O'Sullivan off and gets his eight frame lead restored. Trump eight, O'Sullivan five.
mistake. Get himself going again. Gave it all in that last frame. Got no result in the end from it, O'Sullivan. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Well, just cue ball travelling a little too far there. For comfort. Well, nicely controlled. This is the kind of frame he actually needed. Thirty-five. Didn't want too many more of those 36. half an hour plus frames. Doesn't really suit O'Sullivan. Forty three. Control. That is nicely controlled. Forty nine. We've got to 50 in just four minutes. One more red required after this black. It was a big error from Trump to let him in. It was, but he's taking it well, isn't he? 65. I mean, he was a gift. I mean, gratefully received as well. As it's nice for him to know that the fluency is still there after being slightly bogged down, both of them actually. Yes, I mean, psychologically it felt like a big frame to lose that last one, but he's bounced back immediately 81. here. 82. Ninety. Trump has still got to beat him. And if O'Sullivan can punish every error from here on in, he's got every chance of turning this round.
97. Ninety-eight. This break's been going just over six minutes. Blue for the century. <laughs> Again, very nicely received. They were there when he came to the table, but you're still going to make them. He had some shots in the monks there, which were not that easy. 108. <laughs> 112. 117. So, game on again. O'Sullivan refusing to go away. What a great break this has been. Just over seven minutes. Wonderful stuff from Ronnie O'Sullivan, 130. A total clearance from the five times world champion. He's back in it again. Judd Trump to break. So Judd Trump leads 8 6, but Ronnie O'Sullivan's just made the highest break of the match. 130 total clearance in that last frame. First to 10 wins. would head up the table towards the bulk end and safety had he missed it and he didn't miss it oh goodness me that's the sort of shot that the opponent plays so well Judd Trump that's absolutely brilliantly played around two cushions fuck Ultra aggressive. Lots of screw and left hand reverse running side the full works. Six. Colin Humphreys just needs a bit of time in this because there are no spots available for the pink to go on. It's got to go somewhere. And down the middle of the table, underneath the bunch. But not touching anything. Thank you. Twelve. Well, he has the angle to get into the bunch now. This is a big shot. Well, he's on one anyhow. The reds haven't exactly spread open beautifully. Twenty. Twenty eight. Twenty nine. Oh, 
Oh, that's a very good shot. <laughs> Calculated well, getting into them again. Not that's all the reds have moved, but he's brought three into play. The zip he gets on the cue ball. Goes into the bunch, out of the bunch quickly. Might play into them again here with the knowledge that there's a red on. Whatever happens, there'll be a red available to the right middle. Beautiful. Got into the bank three times in this break. Just some blind skill. All that playing this one slowly, wasn't it? Delightful shot. Well, he's rocking and rolling now. 43. Yeah, he lost that 45-minute frame, but the last frame was only 10 minutes. This is shaping up to be probably about the same if he carries on. And all of a sudden, there's only one frame in it. Giving himself every chance. Forty-eight. It's remarkable to think, considering he plays the fewest tournaments of any of the top players, that if he wins this one on Sunday, he goes back to number one in the world. He's not been there since May 2010. Fifty-six. She finished a little close to this one, to the corner. Fifty seven. <laughs> A little while there is worried it was going to go in behind that 62. red cue ball. He's all right. Not exactly perfect, but he's on the red at least. Sixty-three. What oh, a shot that was! Absolutely a one. And this black is frame ball. It's another quick kill. Two great frames from the great Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yes, and what a great match as well. Well, he had every 71. reason to be deflated by that 45-minute 13th frame, but he's come back, put together two golden contributions. 76. Seventy-seven. Eighty-four. Eighty-five. Well, if it's going to be back-to-back -back centuries, he needs both reds here. First, I'd really like to see it under the circumstances of this match. It'll be some achievement. Ninety-two. It's got to drop the red in the middle. It's quite a slow trickle required. <laughs> Not necessarily that easy from where he's finished. Ninety-nine. This is for back-to-back -back hundreds. He's playing it, I think, down the bottom. Ah, oh, what a shot. What a player. 100. I think, Dave, we thought it might be a match of the season, and it's, it's starting to live up to that, isn't it? It's absolutely 107. stunning game of snooker this is turning into. Yeah, and two brilliant frames here from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Just when he needed to find something, he has done. 112.
121. Trump still in front, but O'Sullivan producing the best snooker of the day in back to back frames. It's going to be successive total clearances if he pots this black. 19 minutes of sheer brilliance from Ronnie O'Sullivan, 130, followed by 134. He is right back in it again. Just one frame between them, Judd Trump. Before we get on with the next frame. Yes, and I think if you are Judd Trump sitting there this evening, or certainly when you came into this session, 6-2 up, as you did, you have to be prepared for an onslaught from someone like O'Sullivan, which could take him two or three frames quickly. You know it could happen. So you have to mentally prepare for that. I'm sure he has done. He is still in front, but it's a slender lead now. But of course, when O'Sullivan now gets closer, things start to come back on his shoulders more. That's the nature of the game and the psychology around it. I don't think he'll continue this clearing up every shot. But he's on 264 unanswered points due to those total clearances. Like you say, it's not long. Only 20 minutes since Trump last potted the ball. It means that these sort of parts, if he goes to them, are mighty difficult. Well, he didn't hit it badly, did he? Let's be honest. But it stayed out. Pretty good safety shot now, especially that the red has gone near the middle pocket, so the containing safety is not easy. He can't play the cue ball very easily at the, the black end of the table. He's got to find a very thin edge here. Call it a little bit thick. He's left this chance for O'Sullivan. He can get to the red, the left red. <laughs> and he needs a cue to hold up here, a bit sharpish. One. For once, he's not on one very easily. This time, he's not going to play anything too expansive, I don't think. I guess you can't pot all the balls all the time. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. Is it? Oh, it's just stayed Ryan out, but didn't hit the red. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Yeah, we're going back. Whether it was going in or not. Just wonder actually if it was to have gone in, and it might do this time if it misses, whether O'Sullivan might try something else. I mean, from cue ball in the D, he might think about playing a shot to nothing safety. Okay. Let's find out if he hits it or not, though, first.
Oh dear, that is the oh, worst miss. possible outcome missing it on that side. Doesn't take much, does it, for a match to turn around. Just a couple of shots here and there. Another mistake what? from Trump has given O'Sullivan another chance. Uh, I guess, crucially, pink and black not available yet. Wouldn't make it like the other two frames at this point. It stands, they do well to make a big break here. Seven. Thirteen. He certainly hit that one pretty well. He might consider just trying to free the pink here. He might play a little cannon towards the, the reds to the right of the pink. It's a possibility. Deciding not to. But again, high value colours not really in positions to pot. Eighteen. Things are getting a bit more difficult now. Twenty-four. Now oh, this is a real queuing shot. The pot and getting up the table for low valley colour. Sullivan, 24. However good you are, however well you've been playing, that shot was never going to be easy. 297 points without reply. 27 minutes without a ball. Been potted by Trump. All ends there. What? Yes, and now the the crunch time is how many he can make here. Now the chance has eventually come. Six. Seven.
12. Thirteen. You're seeing what goes to the left corner from the right side. A couple of reds to the right of the pink. I think he's interested in the bottom one, perhaps, of those couple. And, of course, the ones even further down. But the same problem is there that Sullivan it's had. Pink and black have never been in play. Well, the middle red, it does go. It's not the worst shot. It didn't look great when he first hit it, but actually, as you can see, there's a good chance to keep the break going. Not missed a pot with the rest today. Three out of three so far. But the pressure is at his highest now, all day. Right in the middle of the pocket, though. 25. The point is, regardless of what's been thrown at him, and plenty has in the last half an hour, Bias Sullivan got every right to be confident in his game at the moment. The season he's had has been his best ever, including two wins in finals, of course, over Ronnie O'Sullivan. Getting this cue ball to zip around the table quite amazing. I noticed it once again earlier in this break. 28. This has been a tremendous break 29. so far. Not a big break, but quite complex. I'm trying to keep it going. 30. Played with right hand running side. Bit of a stretch if he's playing that red now. 34. We can barely get to this. 35. Well, he's played it 35. pretty well, yeah. but has not been lucky. <coughs> played it, obviously developed the red as he did, but he thought he'd probably end up on the blue. He's very good at these recovery shots on the brown, swinging the cue ball around, but this one, actually, from where he is, is even tougher than usual. <coughs> Big shot. Shot Trump, 35. Didn't get very close to it, which is the biggest shock of all. score enough so that he wouldn't need the brown at the end of the frame but I don't think that's really going to happen black's not going to be potted with these two reds anyway you'd have to take red pink twice yellow Six. green that would be 23 in it 22 on Seven. Eight. 
probably going to have a look at the scores now and he's going to realise that he will need the brown. 12. 13. Still some hope here for Trump. This frame is not over yet. Nineteen. Great effort. Surely he's not going to snook himself here, is he? Wow. 24. 22 in front. So, Trump could tie. And Ronnie, of course, he's not going to be potting it here, so he's still in the frame, but hanging on just. Ronnie, what he could do, I wonder if Trump's got the chance to develop the black here as well, which would come in handy. what he's tried to do. Could end up with another very dramatic frame, this one. Yeah, could be a respot. Sullivan hopes not. said good shot they could see immediately that he got the snooker I think he could have played that a lot better. That's very good. He's actually left a little bit of it sticking out. I still don't believe he could have done much more than that. He's played it quite nicely. Sullivan might just have a little pop at this. made a difference had that gone in. Oh, 
the draw. He hasn't left it, but he's probably lost the advantage. O'Sullivan's likely to get him in to a little bit of trouble here. Get the cue ball and the object ball just about where he wants to. Distance between the two balls, I think, is the key here. Got to hit it, first and foremost. Second, don't leave it on. That'll do. Everyone is having a look for this one. The point is, it obviously frame ball, but he's not guaranteed to be a shot to nothing this one. He doesn't get it. Well, I think Trump will have a go at this. He will not under complete control, but the likelihood is he'll be somewhere near the blue. Was worried about the in-off. Four. Oh, we could be heading for a re-spotted black here. <coughs> Overhit slightly, more than slightly. Nine. A stretch apart from anything else this yeah it is and it's not only the, the stretch to, to get to it but the pot the natural way of potting it would be to take the cube up the table so you don't be able to pot the black after it so this is a difficult shot to pot and hold using a lot of screw here check side Job trunk nine so O'Sullivan needs the pink. And it's three in a row. And for the first time since we were one each, the match will be level. So Roddy O'Sullivan has dramatically leveled the match. Two total clearances and then a pink ball win. Just O'Sullivan has won three on the spin. And this is officially a classic. A few nails being bitten here. In this clan did no venue, venue come route. Nobody leaving. Judge Trump was hoping by now he'd have it won, but he's going to have to do it the hard way. Had a chance in that last frame, just came awkward frame on the pink. Judge Attempted it, break. missed, left it, and that was eight all. Best of three.
Yeah, it's been a superb effort from 6-2 down to get here for O'Sullivan because he wasn't really in the match in the opening session. He played to his best. He was outplayed. And he's come back very strongly from 8-5 down. Yeah, you can just see how much he wants to win. Sometimes he likes to deflect that by saying that he's not too bothered. Clearly he is bothered the way he's played this match. He's fought hard for every single ball. One of the great champions in any sport, and of course his longevity is what's so incredible. First won a ranking title in 1993. Meanwhile, Trump has parted an absolute perler into the middle there. What a pop that is. What well, really was from where he is, look at that. Just threaded it through past the black and the bunch and got on the black as well. Brilliant shot. His intention is clearly to stay positive. Eight. Well, you can see it from this angle even better how difficult it is. Yeah, it was sort of no. ball that Mark Williams was potting in the World Championship final last year against John Higgins, just getting in with ridiculously good pots to the middles. Happy birthday to Mark Williams, by the way, 44 today. Of course, he was beaten yesterday by the man at the table. quickly around to see what went Twelve. to the middle at the side of the bunch which is okay thirteen Not a great angle to get from blue to red. And that was always the problem. Those bulk colours seem even bigger than usual when you're trying to avoid them on the way back up. 18. from 18. Judd Trump hasn't made a half century in this match since frame eight. It's now frame 17. So that earlier fluency has just gone away a little bit. Scrapped out a few frames since then. There you go, we got the same pot success rate. Ninety one percent. But point you made. Take it even further. His highest break in the match is only 69, and man, he's playing. Sullivan's made three centuries. What? I think it'll be a huge blow if he went behind. Yeah, Judd Trump having led 6-2. If he went 9-8 uh, down, that would ball. really hurt him. So again, this is a big frame as well. Foul. Now, how much damage has he done One is the first Trump thing to wonder about. Okay, I'm lucky to have knocked the red in. 
Has he left a red on? I'm just looking to see if those two reds are actually in a plant that he knocked in. I don't think they were. Anyway, that is in a roundabout way. That's worked out in Judd Trump's favour, hasn't it? Amazing game. Because he, he'd have probably ended up having to play this himself had he knocked the other red in. Yeah, it's high stakes stuff now, isn't it? O'Sullivan what? going for that tough red. But now Trump right back in again. This would be the perfect time to make another big break. Eight. Nine. talk about O'Sullivan's thousand centuries quite rightly 16. but Trump last week at the Championship League made his 600th century the youngest player to get to that milestone helped by the proliferation of tournaments of course 17 well, he's going to make sure that he closes out this frame here he really can't afford to let O'Sullivan back to the table with a chance of winning it And he had the red near the middle pocket. He always knew that was there. So that he'd be on something. 22. He wanted to be on something else. But he has got that backup red still there. Just wonder if he's a bit worried about going in off plain ball. Into the yellow pocket. He might have to do something with the cue ball here to stop that. Played it with a little bit of stun and side. 23. Yeah. Doesn't have the cue ball cleaned all that often, Trump. <coughs> and it helps if you can reach it, then he can. When the pink is respotted, I think he's okay. He is. 29. <laughs> 30. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Well, he's got his lead back in the match, crucially, I think. Forty-five. Forty-six. Yeah, very important break for Judd Trump just to steady the ship from his point of view. 53. Sullivan won three on the spin, but he finds himself behind again. 54. Well, the frame is well and truly won. You 61. can see it's a close match, this. Look at that. Ball's potted. Absolutely level. 
Judd Trump, 61. So Judd Trump. Trump's first half century since Frey, mate. What a time to make it. O'Sullivan went for that tough red to the middle, missed. Trump did the rest. He's... Uh, that was a very scruffy old shot, actually, for Sullivan by his high standards. Uh, what does he do here? I, mean, I guess he's got to play the snooker, isn't he? Seems the positive shot, really. Get right in behind the brown. He's got the advantage. And he's blocked off the left side of the table, which is a good way of playing it, to stop Ronnie just dropping into it from one side. But he might try and lay up to the red out on the open on the bottom left of the table. <laughs> well, he might. He didn't hit it very hard, but he hit it, I think. <laughs> and it's not a touching ball. It must have been a feather if it touched it at all. Well, let's have another little look at this. Okay, it's not touching and nothing much moved. Anyway, Colin Humphreys was on the on the spot, so what can you say? A very well played shot actually at safety shot he's still in this match i mean there is a strong argument to say at six two down in between sessions he'd settled for being nine eight down and much closer and with a real chance of winning It wouldn't be an easy pot if the yellow wasn't kind of a distraction. It's not easy at all and with no high value colour available. 
I'm not even sure if we'll go for this red if you can see it. Problem is, what else can he do? that he should look to see whether the black was available. Pink actually goes past the red. That red was very difficult. The yellow was certainly a distraction to him. As you can see, that camera angle tells you just the distance Seven. between cue ball and object ball better than ever. Nineteen. This will certainly open up some other reds. That could be the moment, couldn't it, when he twenty gets over the line here. Still got work to do, but just to keep building away at this break. <coughs> Another queuing shot. Sort of wanted to be a lot nearer to the red than this. Twenty-five. To finish top side of the blue as well. His timing is impeccable tonight. Thirty-one. Well, he does have a thinnish one to this left corner. Thirty-two. Now, if he leans across, he's got to be careful here because the waistcoat line would be where that red is over on the right of the table. It's a player. It's one of the first things you think about. You have to be a little careful not to it's kind of in his way. That's why he wants to play it in a slightly uncomfortable-looking way so that red doesn't end up being a foul shot. Yeah, I was going to say, tuck, tuck your waistcoat in. That would help, to a degree. Still uncomfortable, though. He looks very uncomfortable in the shot, doesn't he? <laughs> this break, he's hitting a lot of balls on the way through. He knocked the blue safe on the last shot. He hit the brown and pink there. He's still on the red. He's taking 34. a bit of a hammering tonight when you think about it. He's 6-3 down on the night's play. But due to his good lead this afternoon, he's still in the box seat. Yeah, and the other thing that we maybe haven't mentioned is mental strength as well. He's shown, because he was hit with an onslaught by O'Sullivan. He's knocking some balls in here, isn't he? Well, this is a great break in his own way, and a different way to those wonderful... Back to back centre from O'Sullivan. He's just trying to get nearer and nearer to the winning line, ball by ball. And 
And he's going right-handed on this shot. Screwing back a long way. <laughs> he's over-screwed it by a mile. 39. It's hard to have the same touch, I would say, on that shot. But you can screw back the length of the table with your opposite hand. I can't believe you've got the same control. Try to play in behind the blue. He Drop leapt up in the air. 39. He's not quite got it right. <laughs> Decent break under the circumstances. Only 39, but very useful. It's now 22 minutes since Ronnie O'Sullivan potted a ball. Remember, he won two frames in just 18 minutes. Two total clearances from 8.5 to 8.7. I don't think Judd Travel mine the, where the blue, pink and black are at the moment. 39 might not seem a lot, but with those high value colours safe, it's quite a lot. Now that Ronnie's got a chance again, how on earth is he going to make a few here? to make something happen. He's got to try and, I think, find a way of getting the black into play. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen for him. Of course, if the scores were the other way around, he was in front, he would be happily just chip away in the way that Trump was doing. So here is the moment. That's a terrific shot. <laughs> Had to get the black into play, and he's done it. Right. Well, there's never been a better break builder. Can he conjure up something here to take us all the way? 11. Do it again. Well, he's asking for the Humphreys to just respot that. I don't think he's questioning it. He's entitled to do that. I think once it's quite important, isn't it? Because I think we're talking about fractions here as to whether he could land in behind the black to pot it. Yeah, it really is tight. 
I wonder if he'd consider playing to flick the red that's to the left of the black into play here. That would be an even better shot if he could do it. Everything's at very close quarters if he tries that. Played it, but didn't get it. And this is from up there. It's a, 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 probably a shot too many. Chance to get another high-value colour into the game, perhaps blue or pink. He could use that. Might get them both into play and play the snooker behind the green. <laughs> Well, that is everything in one shot. And, and he couldn't have played all three, surely. He could, but he's not a magician. Trump looked a bit ashen-faced when he came out of his chair. Everything's changed in one shot. to the left middle he has to an extent but is it a risk that Sullivan can risk taking here oh, what, a shot. what a shot not much pocket to aim at from where the red was that Ronnie is using the extension on his cue that comes with the table. He hasn't even got his own extension like most other players do. Almost everyone else on the tour, I should think, has one of those. Whoa. Well, who's and ours? He's not on the black. No. Blue would be risky. He'd probably go into the green and playing it. He may have to just wait one here. It's a very bold shot if he plays the blue. He's got to pot it and avoid hitting the green. Oh, brilliant. Just brilliant. Could easily have lost him the match had he missed it, but he didn't miss it. 14. Fifteen. Trump wondering, do I come back to the table or is it a decider? Yeah, a lot will depend, I think, on what he's just saw from Ronnie, what he's doing here. He wants to get low on the bottom red to flick the other red near the right cushion into play, and he's usually an absolute master at this shot. Well, he hasn't quite played it to the usual high standards to leave himself the cannon. 20. He's straight enough on this red. 
Oh, well, a little interlude while he ties his shoelaces. He's pulled his socks up from 8-5 down. Well, he's going to have to get on the red via the black this time. As you can see, too straight to do anything by getting the other red out. Twenty one. This is not an easy shot. Screwing in behind the red. Oh, that's tremendous. He's not quite nailed it with regards to position, but it was still very nicely hit. It's very thin to the right middle. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 28. Well, as you say, it was a question of little chunk comes up the table. And he's absolutely no doubt delighted that he is with a, a realistic chance of winning the match in this frame. But he's got to put in a good shot here. you can complain about that might be a gap O'Sullivan can get directly through to the red well there's definitely a gap he can hit full ball but can he keep it safe can he avoid the double kiss done all that but again Trump might have the slight advantage here is there another gap Trump cannot believe it brings the cue down sign of frustration it's all up to O'Sullivan though to knock it in this could be the shot that takes us to nine each. What? Well, it, it just got a bit more angle on this green than he would have wanted. Which means it's either very difficult or impossible to hold for the yellow. Especially with the pink there. He might have wanted to come a bit further down the table. Not an easy shot now. Just the cue ball near the side Four. cushion is the worry. And he's nailed to the cushion as well. No shot is easy playing from there. <laughs> Everything is just a little difficult. Surely now, he's 10 in front, he needs brown and blue. Uh, what a frame he's won here. 13. He was 39-nil down, everything was safe. He got everything in open play. There was one very significant shot where he freed blue-pink, got the Thank snooker. You. And since then, he's been the governor in the frame. 
So after five and a half hours of battle, one more frame to decide it. Ronnie O'Sullivan levels up. And it's a decider. Judd Trump, nine. Ronnie O'Sullivan, nine. Match of snooker. It's delivered. Um, we just can't wait to see what's going to happen. Now, let's, let's get this Thank you. one the under the deciding frame, frame for a place in the final of the Tour Championship. Nine frames apiece. Here's Judd at the table. I'll hand you back to Neil and David Hinn. So Judd Trump to get the decider underway after an epic battle here today in Clad did know one more frame to decide the first finalist. On the head-to-head -head between them before the start of play, it was 10 all. We expected it to be close. We still don't know who's going to come through. played in behind there, he would have played to the cushion, bomb cushion that is. That is a very good shot, you know, from there. He had a big swerve into the first cushion, or the only cushion. Big target, I realise, but he played it well. Now, Sullivan's only thing that's not really been right today, because he's scored three centuries and he's played some brilliant snooker, is his long game has not been as good as usual. This will be another examination of it. It's absolutely dead straight, this. Now, there's another one gone astray. And it affects a player. When you miss the straight ones, the dead straight ones, it really affects you. You think, why am I missing it? What am I doing that's not right? And that's how he's feeling right now. So it's a chance for Trump. Whoa. Screwing into the pack, getting things open. saw him when he left that last red on in the last frame he brought his cue down first little sign of frustration the whole day but he's in in the decider yeah it's only just went in this red but the last frame was like this the black wasn't Six. available trying to score away on the lower value colors never got as far as he wanted to with it it's been a great game. The audience. Slot Boss sponsors ITV Four Nights.
12. Thirteen. Just to say, if you lost pictures there briefly, apologies for that. Well, this has just got shades of, as I said, the previous frame, the difficulty in getting this break started. Yeah, that was a good shot, but he's not 18. finished on the red particularly well either. He's scrambling around, trying to get points without everything being there in open play. No one thing, whoever wins out of these two is going to be pretty ecstatic, I think, at the end of it. Differing emotions for Trump, it will be relief. For O'Sullivan, it'll be one of his best ever comebacks and a long career, I think. Now the black is on. They've been going in along there, but again, you could miss them. This does go in. It opens everything up. Well, he played it so slowly, gave it every chance. Twenty-six. This is about all the practice, all the hours and hours practicing, getting everything right with your cue action and your mind. You know, bits into place, hopefully. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Two remarkable talents of different generations have come head to head today and produced an absolute treat. Well, he's got the angle to go into the reds, but he doesn't really want to do that. Not with two or three sticking out that he can get on. Forty-two. Forty-three. Well, he could have played cannon to the left of the red if you'd have missed the cannon it'd be on the on the right of the bunch 50 that sort of a angle hitting into the red was not a good one didn't mean to be on this red 50. now there could be another twist of Sullivan very quickly out of his 50. chair yeah, and because he gets close to this, it stays in the jaws of the pocket. He leads by 50. Thank you. Yes, and he knows he should have won the match there. Well. I 
did Ronnie will look at the blue. It's just off straight, taking him down towards the reds. Worth a look. But he doesn't see it quite right as the angle to get in behind a couple of reds to the right corner. Good effort, just not quite far oh. enough. O'Sullivan annoyed with himself that he's got to play this shot. Feels almost like an all or nothing shot. Foul. Oh. Wow, he's fouled. He's been called for a foul. Oh, Can you fall. believe it? He got the pot. He must have caught the yellow or something there. Yeah, I didn't see it at the time, I have to say. This is huge. Colin Humphreys, the referee. R Ronnie's waiting for the replay. He's looking up at the monitor. He wants to see it again. Fall. Well, he can't see it from there, but it was the yellow, clearly, with his waistcoat. Well, I have to say, I, he caught the foul very early, didn't he? But Trump has not taken advantage. It looked for all the world to be over. Well, what a roller coaster of emotions this has been tonight. He's tucking his waistcoat in this time. This is where all that running has uh, done him good. Four. Well, this was the earlier foul. Just on the left, if you see it. Oh, I mean, listen, it must have been a waistcoat foul and nothing really moved. Five. Bottom line, though, Trump didn't take advantage, missed that red to the yellow pocket. O'Sullivan darted back to the table. Be 40 behind with the blue, 59 on. This is heading right down to the wire, this match. Yellow on the bulk cushion could play a part yet. Eleven. Well, this was the miss that followed the what we think was a waistcoat foul. And his expression says it all. Oh, goodness me, what's going to happen next here? Well, sometimes you just can't believe what you're watching. It's one of those crazy frames. He misses the pink, he flukes it into the 17. yellow pocket. Thank you. Yeah, slightly develops the yellow as well, <laughs> from where it was. He has a chance at this red as well. And he's brought the red into play, but his next colour's not easy. Goodness me. What a game. This is a big shot, really big. Never looked like missing it, did he? And we play it well. Twenty-four. I think everyone's playing on 
memory here. Instinct. Everything else just goes out of the window when you're in this situation. Oh, the fluke, I mean, it went in, this, this pink went into the green pocket about 100 miles an hour. Look at the yellow as well, which just slightly developed there. That doesn't sound a lot, but he money will need that yellow. It's easier from where it is than where it was. Just Does not want to be straight on this. He has a slight angle, but the, the wrong side to make it easy to get across. Gonna punch it hard. Goodness, that nearly stayed out as well. I just wonder what's going to happen next. It's hard to imagine there won't be a further twist. Sure, the same doesn't happen again on the yellow. So he's missed the red. John Trump, 31. 19 in front. What a chance now! Yeah, I think Ronnie just when well, he walked away from the table, he felt that was it. But these have still got to be taken. Like I say, the yellow is still not absolutely what? simple. That's all you'll need, though, if he takes the blue here. Yeah, 25 in front with the blue, 27 on. So yellow is match ball. Well, if he plays this slowly, I don't think you'll be interested in getting on the green for now. Six. It won't be his priority anyway. You worry about the green after this yellow's been potted. should have played it that way. I think he should have just dropped it in. Trump, Why six. did he play on the green? Thank you. If he puts the yellow, he's got a shot at the green, but not at that pace. Can't believe that. Well, he pots the yellow. He's 27 in front with 25 on, but he's played it at pace and he's missed it. That is unbelievable. Sometimes you have to make sure of match ball. If he plays that slowly, I don't think he would have missed it. Well, now he's snookered. Yeah, he's horrible as well. And Sullivan's got now. Again, not easy by any means, this. It's as good as straight. We've seen him miss these sort of queuing shots throughout the match. But not that one. That was sublime queuing. He needs... The five remaining balls. Five. Yes, obviously, you know, the final black is not going to be a gimme. There it is. Nine. He's fought so hard all day. He was chasing the game 6 2 down, 8 5 down, 9 8 down. A ball there from going out of the tournament. That yellow. Fourteen. Well, this will be a tough one for Trump if he does go on and lose. Twenty. Oh, this is a ticklish one. This is not. Not simple by Quiet, any please. means. 
Five hours, 50 minutes. It's all come down to the last ball for a place in the final. And in it goes, Ronnie O'Sullivan, first into the final. And you can see what it means to him. He chased the game all day long, but he gets victory on the very last ball. And he is absolutely delighted. He never gave up, not once all day did he give up. Judd Trump will be pig sick. He had a chance to wrap it up, miss that yellow, playing it at pace when it was all he needed. And you can see O'Sullivan and his supporters leaving this arena. Absolutely delighted. He's in the final of the Tour Championship. He's finally beaten Judd Trump by 10 frames to nine. Well, what an extraordinary sporting moment. Never mind snooker match. That was just one of those incredible uh, matches. Um, I don't know whether Ronnie O'Sullivan had watched Scotland at Twickenham on Saturday, but that was some comeback, Stephen. Uh, it, was a, it was a phenomenal frame. It was just uh, ebbed and flowed back and forward. One, one minute you thought Ronnie was going to win. Well, in the beginning, obviously, Judd got in first, 50 break. Mm -hmm. Judd's going to win, then Ronnie's going to win. Then Judd, it was just like... In the end, you, 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 no one had a clue because every time someone missed, you thought, well, that's it, yeah. that's it, it over. It, the thing, it felt at times as though Trump had won this match three times over. Mm, exactly. This game never ceases to amaze. I mean, we're going to show some of what went on in that last frame. It might take us a while to get through it. First of all, there's a foul. There's a waistcoat foul. Um, the referee calls it. Foul. It's it's a foul, you know. There's there's no referee in the world is ever going to call that. And like, then, then Ronnie's going to win. Then it was just like, in the end, you, 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 no one had a clue because every time someone missed, you thought, well, that's it, yeah. that's it, it over. It, the thing, it felt at times as though Trump had won this match three times over. Mm, exactly. This game never ceases to amaze. I mean, we're going to show some of what went on in that last frame. It might take us a while to get through it. First of all, there's a foul. There's a waistcoat foul. Um, the referee calls it foul. It's, it's a foul, you know, there's, there's no referee in the world is ever going to call that unless it's a concrete foul. You can't, there, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can sort of see it there. Judd twice misses a ball, doesn't he, Stephen, into mm. this yellow pocket in the last frame, wriggles it, leaves it, and Ronnie gets on the comeback trail. Incredible. I mean, I think Judd's going to take a while to get over this one. Mm -hmm. He's had about four or five good chances to get that match put to bed in that final frame. Mm. Um, what about the, the luck that was... Uh, shown to well both players all the way through this match we've seen flukes we've seen all sorts of extraordinary moments that's what you get and this is the pink isn't it round the middle the and then the other corner even, flick the yellow even developed the yellow yeah, yeah it, just just incredible i mean the, i actually fancy him to miss this because he's trying to be so exact on the pink not for the pressure just that's actually a lot more difficult shot and then Ronnie obviously now it's ebbed and flow that you think no okay trump's going to win now and neil says he shouldn't be he should be just dropping us in judd is not a dropper of balls he doesn't do it. that's not the way he plays I, he, he likes to trump punch them in six. i i totally Thank understand you. what stephen says there the only thing i, I would say is maybe stroke it in rather than but that shot there is the shot of the shot tournament, tournament. yes yeah, 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 under the circumstances and this black's almost better it's half blind almost no pocket to aim at and you can see what it means to him, the biggest win of his season. Mm. It, that will be the biggest comeback of, of Ronnie's career, surely. Well, consider what happened in the Masters, 6-2 down today, um, and, and behind the whole way, to come through that, that's a massive win for Ronnie Sullivan. Mm. Uh, consider what he's won, that match will mean almost more than anything he's won this season, isn't it? Yeah, and the fact that it does mean so much to him is good to see. You see him there with a couple of his pals and, and his supporters and they'll be over the moon for him as well but as I say, it's good to see that the application we spoke about mm -hmm. he's brought it here this week and we're seeing it tonight mm -hmm. and it's fabulous he played awesome mm -hmm. and his focus right through to the end because you know it was a long match mm -hmm. we saw some yeah, hugely brilliant. long frames mm -hmm. frames where in the past Ronnie might have mm -hmm. lost concentration lost a little bit of focus he's shown an awful lot of patience today yeah he showed more intensity this evening um, than it was a bit subdued this afternoon I thought, but right from that long pot in the first frame, um, he was on it tonight. He was stuck on the table uh, like you expect Ronnie Sullivan to do. Yeah, his long game improved. We've seen it with the yellow at the end. Those shots are reserved for the, the very best players in the game. I actually fancied him for it and 
yeah, long game was on point, Judd's dropped off. And, and just a word on, you know, frames 15 and uh, 14, 15, I think it was, mm -hmm. when he, you know, two, those two huge breaks mm -hmm. there, you know, clearances that, that just kind of pinned uh, Trump in his seat. Yeah, and after losing a frame, was it a 40 minute frame? Yep. After losing that, to come to bounce back and just hit your opponent with those two short, short sharp jabs as two it was. Two jabs, exactly. It was, um, yeah, phenomenal. Yes. He throws him out for what, the best part of 30 minutes, 270 odd points. Judd came back though at the end, you know, as Stephen mentioned that frame, one before the uh, at the end, even the last frame, he's knocking in some awkward balls and, and showing real good character, just wasn't enough. Well listen, we've had a great, a great semi-final today, what about yeah. tomorrow? Just give me a th your thoughts then, we've got uh, Mark Allen up against Neil Robertson. Neil Robertson did exactly what Ronnie did, came back from 60 down against Mark Selby. He says, I can't win the semi-final, yeah, my head's yeah, yeah. not there, but nonsense. what do you think? Absolute nonsense. Could be a repeat of the Preston final again, uh, Ronnie Sullivan, Neil Robertson, but I think it'll be another very, very close match, as you'd expect all the top players mm. this week. I think so. I think there's a little bit of pressure off Neil Robertson. He's not practised a lot, but he's come through the match with Mark Selby from behind, so he's got a chance almost from nowhere, and I think he'll be quite relaxed about it. Mark Allen needs a big win again, I think, wants to get to another final. He's been a bit up and down, but it's going to be a classic, as this was. Well, I think whatever happens, we're in for a belting final because we've got some great players just uh, poised for Sunday. Uh, who's going to take on the rocket then on Sunday for the final? Uh, it starts, of course, on Saturday night here, that uh, three-session final. But we've got to get the semi-final out of the way first Friday, tomorrow, 12.45.